Hi, this is James with Brain Candy Pro. <laughs> Cut. <laughs> there is nothing wrong with your television set. Do not attempt to adjust the picture. You are about to participate in a great adventure. You are about to experience the awe and mystery which reaches from the inner mind to... Patsy! I need another one! Hi, this is James with Brain Candy Productions. We can't stop giggling. <laughs> I'm Neil from Dust Geeking Out, and we're geeking out. <laughs> the Outer Limits. But today we're going to be geeking out about Battle Angel Alita, the 2008 English release, and the 2019 movie that came out... Last month. Last month. Because we're in March. Because <laughs> we're in March, which uh, last time you said we were in February, and I was like, wait a minute, it's March It's 7th. a short month that messes with my time schedule. Oh, yes, Sorry. it does. <laughs> so here's a riddle in the comments below. Which month has 28 days? <laughs> and the answer will be right here. There it is. <laughs> are we doing comedy or are we doing movies? <laughs> Oh, we're doing both. Okay, whatever. <laughs> so, as we normally do on this channel with Chris, God rest his soul. Oh my god! <laughs> By the way, he's not dead. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Hi, Chris. I don't even know you. He's gonna be like, damn it, James. <laughs> and be like, I know. Uh, <laughs> oh, my sides. <laughs> yes. Um... We're going to be talking about Battle Angel Alita and Battle Angel, or, and Alita Battle Angel. Ha 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 ha, see, they did a little switchy roo. And we're going to be talking about both of them in comparison of each other. We have to talk about the manga a little bit, because without the manga, obviously, none of this would be possible. We have to talk about James Cameron's involvement. Uh, he was the screenwriter and the executive producer. Wait, was he the executive producer? He was not the executive producer. Hang on, we have IMDb up for this. Yes. James Cameron was a writer, and the director was Robert Rodriguez. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I do comedy. <laughs> so we're going to start talking about the OVA first that came out in 2008 because... Or, excuse me. Huh? <laughs> 1990, what year is it? <laughs> it's 2019. Ah! <laughs> We're going to talk about the OVA that came out first in 1998 because it's uh, kind of the base punk. Base it, punk? It is kind of the base jump. It is kind of the base point where we need to talk about first before we can get into the actual movie. And I feel like... Use your words. <laughs> and I feel like uh, the movie borrows a lot from the anime OVA which is buy my manga <laughs> in the 90s what should i do <laughs> buy my manga Ma I i'm sorry masako x i need to marketing <laughs> um well let's clarify something up real quick so the the anime the OVA that we watched today was actually an English dub that was done in 1998. The original OVA was done in 1993 for a Japanese release. Yes, it was, um, and the manga came out in 1990, um, and the manga and the anime are a little different. Um, the anime, we're going to talk about these points because a we need a little different. Yeah, a, a little different. A little different. Okay. We're going to talk right. about plot. We're going to talk about. Uh, how it differs from the source material a little bit. We're also going to talk about the filmography of the piece, voice sync, the score. We're going to talk a little bit about the pace and characters. So Lots of characters. We're going to talk about the plot first. And since the OVA is a two-parter, we're going to kind of go in between parts one and two a little bit. Uh, <laughs> If I look down at my notes every once in a while, I'm sorry. 
I'll be kind of looking over over, and I may be also looking at IMDb yes. for uh, character names and probably going to butcher probably half of the names. But don't worry, editing is magic. This is true. Because we're got, we've got the cast up, we've got the crew up. Uh, what else do we have? Other than uh, water and teddy bears. Cred- credits. Credits? Oh, yes, credit. and credits. By the way, just in case you didn't know from the title, um, and I'm going to have to throw it up a couple of times... Spoilers. So the anime starts off in the middle of the scrap heap, literally in the middle of the scrap yard, which they actually called Scrap Iron City. Yeah. Which was kind of a, it wasn't a character of its own like it was in the manga. If you watch it, it's definitely got that definitely 90s feel like Cowboy Bebop, Dragon Ball. You can definitely tell the art style is heavily influenced 90s. Mm-hmm. So. It is what I like to call perfect cyberpunk. Like, literally is... It's not the first cyberpunk, but it is definitely, like, my... What cyberpunk, post-apocalyptic cyberpunk would be. Ito finds... Our main protagonist in a literal pile of trash. She's really still alive. And from there, they kind of grow a bond. And but let's talk about this because this does kind of pertain to his character. Yeah, we do. Um, the way he finds it, if you if you ever watch the anime, I will describe him very easily. He looks like a very much older Vash to Stampede. If you've ever seen uh, Trigun. <laughs> And so, he's he's a much. He's a very excitable when he finds her. Yeah. Like, oh my gosh! Well, he just, you're still alive. He's... <laughs> Struck pay dirt. He yeah, found... it's like like he's like he's out in you know scrapyard and he won the lottery. Like I found a golden nugget. <laughs> yeah, he did. Under. He... What, a sign, essentially, is what it was? Because originally he was out there looking like he was, you know, just grocery shopping. Yeah, well, he was. He was finding spare parts. He p- plucks an eyeball out of some poor old guy's skull. And then, uh, you know, he, he finds pay dirt and he sees that there's brain activity inside of this ancient robot body. And he doesn't know quite what to <laughs> say what or to do. do with it. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, oh, dang it. <laughs> so he and his buddy... Oh, can't even remember the guy's name. Hello, my name is Ido. Do you have a name? Can we just call him Hubcat? Uh, yeah, we'll call him Hubcat. Okay. Because he's got a nice. Little... Yeah, he's a, he's another cyborg, and he acts like, kind of like a the uh, nurse slash comedic he's, humor for he's, the part. He's Ido's drinking buddy. Let's just yeah, be that's yeah, definitely definitely yeah. a drinking buddy. Ido's drinking buddy. Um. They, they, they're there to revive Galley, or at least see her as she is revived. Now, that's one thing you also got to know about the, about the OVA. In the OVA, she is called Galley, not Alita. Yes, and actually that is, and we're going to go into a brief history lesson. I feel like I should have a pipe with me. Follow me into a brief history lesson. I thought you did have a pipe. I do have a pipe, but I'm not going to go grab it. I think you should. <laughs> My wife will be like, what are you doing with that? I thought you quit smoking. It's for the aesthetics. Five years ago. It's for aesthetics. Um, <laughs> Viz did this translation thing for the manga, which I kind of understand. We're going to talk a little bit about it because we need to talk about the manga a little bit. Um, Galley is the main protagonist of Gun Dreams. That Gunnam. Uh, or Gunmu. Gunmu, Gunnam. Not to mix, get mixed up with Gundam. Yeah. It's a totally different series, which I'm an avid, bad, uh, avid fan of. Um, well, but, actually, we both are. <laughs> oh, yeah. Big time. Yeah. Um, with with uh, that that portrayal, Galley uh, being the name, she actually gets named originally Alita, but that's the cat's name. So she ends up being Meow. Galley. Meow. And... Uh, they uh, they don't really in the anime say how she got her name Galley. It just there's a really weird montage and lots of exposition. I feel like the whole first half of the first OVA 
is just exposition and it's not slowing down. And then we get a really weird shot of cinematography where we see the city at, in, at night. And we get to see this young girl with really pretty arms smoking a cigarette. And then the next thing we know, she's dead. Dr. Ito to be this real evil person because then they even talk about how there's a serial killer going around killing young girls. And, and at the time when they do speak about that, there had been six killings already. Right. So it, it, it doesn't paint, it's not at this point painting a really good picture for Dr. Ito. Right. It, it, he definitely has a little bit of uh, Geppetto syndrome, that's what I'm going to call it, is he wants a real girl, but... You know, sorry. <laughs> it, it's his interactions with Galley in the beginning seem innocent enough, and I feel like there's not enough build up, and we're gonna talk about a lot of that here in a second. But we we do get a lot of forced interactions with a lot of the characters, uh, Ito and Galley, uh, Galley and Hugo. It just feels like they're trying to make us ship for Galley and Hugo, and it's really... It's it's forced. It's, it, it's the only way to describe it. It is, it is forced down your throat, like, open wide, swallow the sword. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Here comes the choo-choo! <laughs> um, and, and then we get Shirin, which Shirin is pretty cool. She walks in, uh, essentially wanting to talk to Ito, telling him that there's a way back to Zolom. So what's wrong with fixing cyborgs? It's a crime, squandering a talent like yours in this backwater. You know you could do much better up in Zolom. So Shirin is kind of pleading with Ito, hey, I've got a plan. There's a guy that can get us back up to Zolom, and uh, it's just going to cost us some credits, and yeah. we can go. And... He keeps telling her, no, there's no way to get back. And and the other thing is he's he's kind of happy where he is. Very happy where he is. Even though it's in literally a pile of trash. But you Kind know, of. It, yeah, kind of. But he's helping people that need it. Mm -hmm. And you see that a lot. You see a lot of the good You, you see a lot of, a lot of you, you, Dr. Ito have a big heart. Because uh, even in, in the anime or the OVA... He, he's a good Samaritan. I mean, he, he's fixing cyborgs for free. Yeah. Or for, uh, oh, pay me whenever you can. Literally, he even says that, you know, I'm not starving yet. Pay yeah, me I'm when not, you get the credits. Yeah, pay me when you get the credits. I'm not starving yet. And... Doc, I don't have a chance to pay for this. No, don't worry. I'm not at the point of starvation yet. You can pay me when you get the funds. Sh Shirin is not very happy with that. And in all honesty... Uh, their interactions just in the very beginning of the OVA, I almost want to call her a plot device because she doesn't have any other reason to be there other than she's there. And in the manga... It's like she's there to cause drama. Yo, plot device. <laughs> um, ba, 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 ba. And, and that's the problem is a lot of these characters... The interactions are so fast, so yep. fast. Oh, extremely. And, and, and considering like each OVA is like roughly thirty minutes, barely. Considering the, minutes. the two that we watched was within fifty-six minutes total, and yeah. that's just two of them. And yeah, you're right. It, it f extremely fast-paced, like almost to the point of being stupid. Yeah, like nothing should ever be this fast-paced. No, or this forced. It, it, yeah, like I. I so what we're trying to say is. 
it was bad. <laughs> it was. It was bad. It, it wasn't And we'll great. continue telling how bad it was. <laughs> and I mean, I had nostalgia goggles on the first couple of times I saw it because, again, I saw it back in 1998 and I was, what, uh, 14, 15 at the time? So mm, for me, yeah. those nostalgia goggles were really thick. Um, I'm old. Leave me alone. Okay. So <laughs> we start to get more of the mysterious stranger vibe off of Galley because she's not really remembering who she is. Uh, what memory and, she has absolutely no memory. Right. And and and, and who in, am I? In this in this movie, in this OVA, literally she's not really struggling with it, but she's like sweet, innocent. Yeah, the, it, 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 clean slate. slate. Yeah. She's a clean slate and it's it's kind of cool, but then you start to see little rage outbursts in her and oh, not bad for an old man. <laughs> That kind of, in all honesty, is pretty cool. And she's kind of got, because she is so innocent, and she does have a lot of that air of mystery about her, she, uh, she's she got a little bit of uh, what I, not even Pinocchio syndrome, doll syndrome, Indeed. where she's kind of there floating through existing. Now, there is a scene where we do see a little bit of, I'm not going to call it, character development i'm gonna call it a lot of yelling and a rage outburst i mean we're talking like five solid minutes of yelling (laughs) yeah yeah there's so much yelling and there's so much and he has a Mm -hmm. two-year-old and we said that Uh, hmm. Uh, hmm. (laughs) they were filling in gosh darn it adv they were (laughs) filling in so much empty space where they didn't need to fit the Hmm. no they didn't need to be but um that's the other thing let's go to that is that yelling part which takes it to sound is when they are with character interaction, you don't hear much of the music score going on in the background because a lot of the music feels just like that. It's just background noise. It really is. Uh, there is no score until you get to really serious moments. Or major fight scenes. Or major fight scenes, which we're going to talk about a serious moment. Ito walks in late at night. And that's not creepy, right? In a trench coat with a hat, with well, not like a bowler hat, it's like, uh, like, like oh, fedora. Oh yeah, fedora. Fedora so, yeah. with a you know fedora, and his arm is dripping blood. Yeah, that's not creepy. That's not suspicious or nothing. And it's it's one of those like what the hell sort of moments, and Galley takes it as wait the, a minute. The other thing you gotta add to that is even though he's walking through this, he has a suitcase, and it's like four feet tall. Yeah, and it's, it's got wheels. It's a giant it's suitcase. Like, what do you got in the case, Doc? Very heavy suitcase. I don't think you're making a time machine. No. <laughs> <laughs> if you got that reference, congratulations, you're all on our par. <laughs> But from there, uh, Galley kind of forces the the issue upon him. But now she's thinking, oh, dear God, he's the one stalking innocent girls. That moment comes through. And and we both we both thought that, you know, oh, man, is he the one doing this? Well, I knew that he wasn't. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, Excuse me, I'm just going to kick him out for a minute, and I'm going to say how it is. Yeah, I had not seen this before. <laughs> so, essentially... He follow, he's followed by Galley and for this for a different night for a different night and Ido is on the hunt he is we find out he's a hunter warrior insert and, background you know mission impossible music dun 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 dun, dun, dun sneaking around and this following people and this is the weird thing because i feel like the the actual um, score for this anime really comes alive when it needs to come alive and you get a lot of really cool war beats um but it doesn't come alive until it absolutely has to and they're definitely 90s war beats too. oh yeah and it that's the cool part about it so we get to this this point where we see Roma, Romo, 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 not and, to be related to Tony, but Romo and Gorishka, 
And th- you, we find out that he is, Gorishka is actually capturing young girls and eating their brains because he is addicted to the, I think in the manga, he was addicted to the serotonin or the dopamine uh, because he was a glad he was a gladiatorial robot. Yeah, he was a gladiator bot. And uh, he was being paid by another character, Vector, uh, to fight in these gladiatorial competitions. And we didn't get a lot of that part no. of it. We just got to see Gorishka be really mad, try to eat Galley, and it didn't work out in his favor at all. <laughs> Like and, drooling too. Like, yeah, oh, it's like so... creepy. Like, ew! I don't want to date you. It was. It was really super gnarly. And the other thing is, let's talk. Like, talk about his size. Garishka is like we say gladiator, and we're not talking like Roman get your toga or gladiators. We're talking like if you ever seen Dragon Ball Z Broly gladiator. Yeah, he was big. Yeah, I mean, I mean, walking action figure pectorals out the wazoo. Like fist of the North Star, everyone's bigger than Kenshiro, <laughs> sort of like. And no crap. Hadouken is gonna take him out. No, <laughs> you know we get a lot more exposition, and this this OVA is moving at the speed of light, literally. That we're going from one fight into exposition. Don't become a hunter warrior. This is what I am. I'm collecting bounties. Super dangerous work. And then we get to see, like, this sudden explosion of emotion because Galley's like, I want to be a hunter warrior. No, nah, you're good. And she's like, that's no. Where, that's where, excuse me, Doc's um, Geppetto Geppetto's syndrome comes in. Oh, but you're my little girl. You're my, you're, yeah. Don't stain your perfect. I didn't yeah. build those hands for you to stain yeah. them in blood. I want to be a hunter warrior, too. Don't be stupid! You don't know what you're saying! I didn't give you limbs to do things like this. You don't have to work. All you have to do is is be beautiful. If you want money, I can... This isn't about money! This is something for me! This is for you? Yes! Tonight I felt something new. Like I was really alive for the first time. It's like, dude, no. Creepy. Creepy. And it was just really bad. And she had a moment where she's like, no. And and here's the little bit of character development up yours. I'm going to do what I want. Mm -hmm. I'm not your plaything. Mind you, it was that fast. It was. You don't know what you're saying. I don't want you soiling your perfect hands with blood. Do you think I'm some doll for you to play with? It was at the speed of light. And then, you know, she goes and she gets her brain imprinted with a serial number. And she becomes a warrior. Yeah. Barcode. Um, Well, serial number and barcode. So uh, he accepts it. He has no choice now but to accept it. And it's a really quick 360 turn because you go from, you know, him essentially telling her, you know, daddy knows best to you're not my dad to the teenage rebellious stage. I did the thing that you told me not to do. And okay, well, I better accept it now. myself as a hunter warrior mm. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so um essentially when we when we get to the last scene of the movie um galley is going into a bar which are really only for hunter warriors with Ido, and you know he's like hey are you ready to do this and um you know, she has this dog just out of nowhere. Yeah, um, just random dog. Literally random dog. And then that's our one real interesting bit of body horror in this OVA. They is, broke the number one rule. Don't kill the dog or you're going to get John wicked. <laughs> oh my god! It's Grisco! What is he doing? <laughs> This, this is John Wicking before John Wicking was a thing. Oh, yeah. Uh, Galley John Wicked the crap out of Garishka. Like, just. And this flat is after out. Garishka got an upgrade. Yep. He got a major, like, scary 
upgrade. Yeah, he, I don't want to be in a back alley with you. I even before his upgrade, I wouldn't want to be in a back alley with him. That's like the last place I want to be. I'd beg for my life. Please don't eat my brains. I am depressed. I don't have the dopamine you need. Please, I would. I wonder say how he picks anything. his victims if, they, if he knows like if he can read like dopamine levels. Nope, just pretty girls. Just crunch, <laughs> crunch, and done. And then we get to the second half of this manga, which I like to call the shipping of Yugo and Galley. In quotations, you put force in the front of that. Ah, uh, yeah. Just what are you doing here anyway? Uh, well, um, I just really wanted to see you, I guess. Uh, I don't know. It opens up with Yugo essentially stealing a spine from a poor cyborg and Vector coming up with that body horror him. With that body horror part. Oh, yeah. And there's a, there's a scene where you finally figure out Victor is really the bad guy here. We got it. Let's get out of here. Yeah. So, boys, how's business? Hmm. Mr. Vector. Because, you know, Hugo's ripping a spine out, and he's literally showing a spine, like human spine, getting ripped out of a cyborg, and he's going, Help me, help me. He, Victor comes along, he's got a freaking battle axe. He's like, I can't keep working like this if you keep leaving victims alive, Hugo. <laughs> and just literally gives Decapitation! Him... <laughs> he gives him the axe. It's yeah. bad. So... Not, 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 not even second-guessing it, just... Yeah, so we know who the spine thief is. It's uh, Yugo and his buddy... Um, Tanji. Tanji. I have it written down. Tanji. But we get a little bit... We're supposed to... This is building up sympathy for y Hugo. And in all honesty, or like it, it's really... Again, it's rushed. Because you want to buy the manga and you want to read buy it. Buy the mean, manga. In the anime, they completely skip an entire subplot with a werewolf. I am dead serious. The relationship between Victor and Hugo is... Vector. Or, my bad. Vector. Sorry. Um, Hugo is just really a puppet on the string. He, I mean, Victor's kind of like Woody doll and him just pulling him by the string. Just keep... Come on, come on. Little yeah. one. You almost got it. You almost got it. Now, what was it I told you three years ago? Give me... 10 million chips and I'll make sure you get to Zalem. Yes, sir. Normally, it would take a lifetime to acquire that kind of capital. That's ridiculous. Because v Vector says his his, uh, his cost to get to Sol Zalem? 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 Zalem. 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 Sorry, I have, uh, I guess you could say like mild dyslexia. Zalem. <laughs> Zalem uh, is 10 million chips, credits, whatever their form of currency is. You go... How much does it cost to go to Zalem in credits? That makes 9,500,000 chips. <laughs> so you get this death montage from Galley because, you know, now there's a, a price on Yugo's head. And, you know, he's a bounty. He gets caught by, uh, oh, goodness, what is Zapan. it? Zapan. He gets caught by Zapan trying to steal Zapan's spine. And... Hey, kid. <gasps> so that's your little game, is it? So we we get a hitman that essentially go. Uh, I'm getting ahead of myself. Sharin wants to go to Zalem really bad. Like, so, really bad. But so does Yugo. So what ends up happening during a phone conversation with Vector, Vector is talking to Yugo about going to Zalem, and Sharin looks a little jealous. So I, I think she wasn't really meant to hear that conversation either. No, not at all. Calm down. It's over and nothing you can do now will make any difference. I want you to bring all the money you've saved to my office. You mean you'll send me to Zalem? Zalem? Hmm? Look, we'll talk about that when you get here. So now now you goes on the run and Galley meets him in this building and they're trying to hide out. We learn about Hugo it's, and, it's and like his brother. Factory. It's like a factory setting. Yeah, it's it's kind of like an old workshop. 
we find out about Hugo, his brother, and his uh, sister-in-law. Sister-in-law about the whole airship to Zalem, and it doesn't work out. And this is also where he's hiding uh, his cash. Yeah. <laughs> so what ends up happening from here is another hunter warrior comes to claim his prize. And we get to see Galley literally fry this guy using him as a lightning rod. And I thought that was kind of funny. Yeah, because she, she literally, she's what, like a stun thing? She stabs the guy, he yeah. lifts his sword, and it's and lightning just... She's like, like, she's like positively charging him. And I think there's another way around. I can't remember. I gotta go back to my science No, here. no, he was. He, yeah, he's he like was positively positive. charged, and next thing you know lightning strike is so if you know your science on you know meteorology it's you know he's just she just created essentially a giant lightning rod say your prayers and it was it was funny to and then, and then they the brought t- in that that body more like we said that body humor so you see a what body horror or body horror what did i say you said body humor. Gally! You know, see if you go for me. <laughs> oh, God. Look at my head! I mean, because she's carrying it like this under her tarp, and it's like... Uh, yeah, she d- she does uh, carry him close to the vest. Very. <laughs> <laughs> so you can tell what kind of humor we like <laughs> with a little bit more forced exposition um we find out that Sharin is starting to get more acquainted with galley because she's more in love of the idea of what ito has done mm-hmm. and she wants to start seeing more of herself in him but vector already promised you know what i'll send you to zala now we cut away from that we go back to Dr. Ito and company. And, and this is a, a serious change from OVA to movie. Yes. Which uh, we'll discuss. We will discuss. Hugo gets what I like to call reverse pinocchio He becomes a cybernetic body. and I'm a real cyborg. Yeah, pretty much. Um, and not like that cool cyborg DC cyborg body. He no. just... It's from the head down. Hey, I'm a robot. He finds out he can't get to Zalem. There's no way to get to Zalem. How does he get that confirmation? Easily. Uh, we find out that Sharin and Edo, Edo are both from Zalem. Yeah. And, and, and now... there's, a, there's a connection with those two. And it's not just that fact that they were from Zalem. It's they were the best from Zalem when it came to uh, cyborg uh, prosthesis. not possible for someone from Scrap Iron City to go to Zalem. I ought to know, Galley. The brand on my forehead means that I was once a citizen of Zalem. It's all a lie. No! No! You never split the party. You never split the party. Edo you don't goes... Leroy Jenkins. No. But... Leroy! <laughs> it happens because... Ito goes to Vector and questions him about what? Shirin's... Questions? Question? That was more of an interrogation. Well, I'm it, sorry. It wasn't an interrogation. And, and it was a... It aggressive was a, negotiation? Yeah. There you go. If you no, get that one, uh, yeah, you like prequels. Hugo ruined his life stealing money for a lie! Why? 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 Don't lie. <laughs> Clone Wars for the win. (laughs) We do. We get an aggressive negotiation. With a big hammer. With a big hammer. Let me go. Okay. That's one of the cool things I really like. I did like about Ida uh, as his hunter, his warrior hunter. Is he's his weapon of choice, even though he is not cybernetic in any shape or form that we can tell at least. No, he's not He has a rocket propelled hammer. And this hammer has a bloody effing spike on the end of it that's like, hey! 
Anyways, uh, back to Ido and his uh, interrogation tactics. Um, we find out that Shirin has been literally segmented into other body parts. No, no, no. Dismembered. Just dismembered, dismembered dissected, and pickled. Ah! My God. Organ replacements. But, like, uh, like we get, like we said, body horror much? Yeah. I, I, I got a real, like, RoboCop feeling from that scene. Oh, yeah. So, and during this interrogation, Vector gets pretty much speared with his own sword. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's, I even said I was going to talk about that. It was funny because one of Vector's gladiator box actually comes in as security, and um, Ito does one of the manliest things ever and hammers this guy in half. And he's got these kind of weird scissor crab, pincers. Crab, like crabbies. Like, yeah, crab scissor pincers. Like, yeah. Li- li- like, kind of like the Pokemon. Sizer. No, no, no. Scyther had, like, size. This is more like no. his evolutionary form, Scissor. Yeah. Sizer. Yeah. Scizor. Sizer. Scizor. Sizer. Okay, no, I'm not going on with this as an as a hour. We could keep going. Sizer. I don't know what they do. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> She's our. So, um, he gets hoist upon his own batard, and it's. So we get to Galley running after. Hugo and Hugo is doing one of the dumbest things in the world. We see, we see this ring system well, no, just he's sitting climbing, at the he's bottom. Climbing up the, the, he's climbing up the, the trans- tube, the transport tubes, uh, the the shipping tubes, my yeah. bad, shipping tubes, because that's how uh, Zalim gets their supplies from Scrap City. So I guess there is kind of like a recycling thing going on there, isn't there? There is. Um, but, essentially, they send the human remains and also all of their. Um, ecology essentially up to them yeah so they get all of their food resources so on and so forth more like the quote-unquote best of but anyways um hugo is climbing up the shipping tube to zalem and uh our lovely little galley who has pretty much just won every fight in this forced montage of evil of death of death and body horror there's gonna be a montage yeah. yeah, trying to convince her now f- to be, I guess, boyfriend? Or is it like Stockholm Syndrome? Oh. <laughs> I mean... It feels that forced, I'm sorry. Oh, man. Uh, it, it, it really was kind of like... Uh, obsessive? Super like, obsessive. Like, uh, she was Hugo, obsessing. Yeah, she's obsessing over Hugo. Hugo's obsessing over getting to Zalem. Zalem is literally up in the sky. They're practically going up a vertical tube. Literally. It's Zalem! I'm almost there! Hugo! Huh? Gally? Hugo, let's go home! Forget it! I'm never going back to that filthy garbage heap! The Tube of Love. Mmm, that's yep. debatable. <laughs> well, I mean, he does thank yeah. her yeah. for saving him. And before that even happens, you know, she... the. I guess Zalem has a way of keeping the pests out, as they say. Rats. The rats. They actually say rats. Yeah, keeping the rats out. Master Splinter would find that offensive. Oh, I'd hope so. So uh, they send down a defense ring, which, uh, to describe it, is exactly what it sounds. It's a, it's a ring that slides down the tube, and it has a bunch of gyrating blades of death and horror and destruction. And... Hugo, who now has his cybernetic body, jumps and misses it by that, that much. much. Literally takes him off at the ankles. Yep, it's uh, it's horrific. Yeah. And then, you know, he's still crawling up after the fact, which I, I don't know. Because like, he's got that, zeal- that overzealous obsession with getting to Zalem. Like, Zalem is my freedom, and that's not the case, dude. Nope, it really, really, really isn't. But that's... That's not how he thinks or feels at that moment. He, he pretty much almost completely forgets about his relationship with uh, Alita. Or, uh, my, my, uh, Galley. Galley. Sorry. <laughs> so, Galley starts pleading. Listen, we can go like, together. She's crying. 
you can't you can't get there we can go back to the scrapyard together or excuse me scrap iron uh city together and and you don't have to live through this and you don't have to live like this he's not there's more to life than zalem yeah is basically what she's saying. And he's not going for it. He he doesn't want that. In one ear, out the other. So typical male. <laughs> he ends up almost getting killed by another defense ring. He's taken out pretty much, except for one arm and his one torso. arm, his upper chest, and I think his other shoulder. Yep. So and he's holding on by. I th- hang on, I gotta think about this. It, it's one arm. It's he, he's literally being held up by his right arm, and which is, like we said, a mosh posh of... Just an amalgamation of yeah. spare parts. With that... Win, Winry from out, Full Metal would have probably had like a heart attack if she oh, saw that. <laughs> she would have beat Ed just for that. Not he, She wouldn't have beat Hugo for it. She no. would have beat Ed. <laughs> she would have beat Ed. Yeah. And he wouldn't have and, done nothing. But and, Alina uh, gets up there in, in time, you know... Got her fancy knife and saves, no, saves uh, Hugo from falling to his death. But because of the quality of parts, they don't quite hold up the standard. And he uh, comes apart at the scene. Oh, yeah. And we see reverse Pinocchio dive head first into the ground. And finally says, I love you. Thank you for saving me. I love you, death. It's insane. It's like, you you, you should have said nothing. You had me at thank you. Exactly. But... And and, and, and Gally's literally just one arm holding up there. I... Oh. Dang it. They do this kind of cute little homage to Hugo's family. Stick his remaining arm on a little balloon and send it up to Zalem. Yep. And roll credits. And I have to say... Honestly, thank it, God that was over. The whole thing, I had nostalgia goggles on really hard, and it's really hard as a fan to step away from that nostalgia and look at it critically. And it was Neil's first time seeing it, and Neil was like, "What the fuck is this?" And I'm like, "You can judge right now because oh, I no, I was not judging right then and there. I was judging all the way through. <laughs> yeah, it was <laughs> that uh, was painful." It, it was, but now we're going to talk a little bit about spoilers. Alita Battle Angel 2019. Now, and I, will, I will say this about uh, my, my view on the whole um, Gunnam Battle Angel was she, it, yeah, it was fast paced. Yeah, it was definitely a, you could tell, a 90s production. A lot of it was dark. There wasn't really any bright colors, but the character designs were actually really good. Like, the designs of the characters themselves were actually really good. Acting, yeah, really wasn't there because it was rushed and it felt forced. So you And didn't... it was ADV. Yeah, there's that. <laughs> and I think if they had, you know, if they'd rebooted this for, you know, maybe 2015, 2019, 2018, they could have done uh, as some serious damage. They could with, have absolutely. And when I mean damage, I mean it in a good way. As in, it could have been a you know badass anime. You know, even though it's what nine volumes, nine volumes, nine volumes. And I mean, just just to give the fan like, what, what would how thick is a volume usually? Would you say? Um, I Early mean, though. the first volume was thirty six pages. Okay, so not very long. So, uh, it, but that's uh, that's 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 like almost like a standard comic book almost. The first volume. Okay. But, Some of them get thicker than others. Like number six was ridiculous ridiculously thick but there was so much going on on number six it was oh that's when stop me when i'm close it's about like that thick okay it was it was big okay so i mean it varied obviously it it varied but Uh, that also depends on the content like are you just trying to capture an audience are you trying to uh capture or are you trying to captivate capture captivate both at the same time are you trying to keep an audience of you know maybe passwords that this person's done i don't know because i never read them so but he has obviously yeah the other thing is, like you said, it felt like exposition. Like, now I have to go read the manga to get all this background info on these characters. And for the longest time, by the way, um, the manga was not complete. And it recently completed, I, I don't remember the exact year, but it was like in the 2000s. Jeez, and I thought George R. R. Martin was bad. Well, here's the thing. It, it was like a, it wasn't, it was maybe like a 10... 
to 15 year run, which is a lot better than a lot of some of the standing anime we're going to talk or manga. We're going to talk about the Giver a little bit. The Giver was uh, still going on. And it's like that's the the guy who finds the alien bug thing, right? Kind of like a Power mm-hmm. Rangers, yeah, mass common writer sort of thing. Yeah, yeah. And that that manga is not complete <laughs> in the slightest bit. And was, uh, they actually had a good anime on that. Actually, they did a while they, back. Yeah, they had two good animes and one good OVA. I think I've seen the OVA. I don't, uh, or at least part of it. I was, it was on Tsunami, I think. After before Adult Swim had Tsunami, but I think it was maybe during Adult Swim. I don't remember. Is that? Right, and looking at it without nostalgia goggles, honestly, you can tell it was a advertisement for the manga. But the 2019... 2019... ...version... We're going to talk about... Now you got me excited. We're going to talk about lots of good things with that because and honestly... I'm excited. This is my excited face. It, it was good. It was really good. I was really surprised with it. Um, I want you to talk about the 2019 version because honestly, it hit you good. It hit yeah, you hard. It hit me good. It hit me hard. So 2019, um, obviously, I, quite honestly, I think this is great. One, a great year for movies because... Um, a lot of people, I, I, they see Alita Battle Angel. And mind you, they've been advertising Alita well over a year. For well over a year. I mean, I, I remember seeing a teaser trailer for Alita, I believe, back in 2017. And even more than that, James Cameron, straight up, when he wrote and produced Avatar, mm-hmm. he said, I am literally building this motion caption uh, technology for Battle Angel. Yeah. This is my dry run. Yeah. They started out very strong and almost almost scene for scene in the scrapyard of where all the trash gets dumped from Zalem. Now, I'm not sure if they call it S- Solemn or Zalem because it's hard to tell about their pronunciation. Zalem. In this. Zalem. It was definitely a hard Z. Yeah. So Zalem. we see uh, Dr. Ito, you know, doing his scrap shopping, essentially. You know, ch- picks up this arm and it's literally like, you know, just... Oh, Oh my God. you know forearm elbow up forearm checking it out tests it kind of just puts it back down no, nothing nothing really exciting him and he sees a skull like a, a head because i can't call it a skull because it's not not human it's, it's cyborg we brain's can call going it a skull we can call okay. it a skull it's like a half skull because the, the bottom jaw is missing it's got some teeth missing he's like ooh, pretty nice eyeball pops that out and yep dr ito in this is played by uh christopher waltz and quite honestly you look at him and you look at the anime and you look at the manga that he was a great cast he was greatly cast for this like he has a very nice bone structure facial structure for uh, a dr ito and i quite honestly i can't figure out anybody else i'd want to you know have him no. cast as i gotta and, i gotta throw this up because like yeah he uh, is oh man. yeah he was uh, great as dr ito yeah i mean i mean you see the facial structure he's got you know a very doctor-esque yeah. Uh, look to him you can tell this guy you know had some intelligence oh big time and um so he's got he's got this little scanner he's, he's a little scanner his hand, he's just walking around checking parts and lo and behold he finds you know a half you know torso up cyborg kind of battle damage but you know old cranium still knocking yes yep. the noggins the wheelhouse is yeah. still rolling it's still going so he picks it up and he's not excited like in how Dr. Ito is in the anime. He's more or less shocked, like, holy crap, you're still alive? But not saying it out loud, but in his eyes you can see it. So he's, without saying anything, uh, Christopher Waltz is always so very expressive when he, when he acts. So I don't think he's seen anything, anything else that he's done. As so a matter he, of fact, I, gotta, I, I just, I just, yeah, yeah. Uh, just right there, just he yeah, was a I mean, you warrior. Can, you can see the, the just expression in his eyes. He's got fear, anger, worry, all sorts of. You just get, you got a lot going on here, but you can tell and you can feel it. He is my so, he is my Doctor Ito. Yeah, he. Is, I mean, I will probably never look at Christopher Waltz the same way as except Doctor Ito now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not I'm, as I'm, a sorry I'm sorry, Christopher. Yeah, you know, I'm sorry, you know, Mr. Waltz. I 
I'm sorry to say that. I'll probably end up with a, a Alita Battle Angel poster and want you to sign it eventually if you ever come to a convention. So he takes uh, this broken out cyborg and he's got this nurse who uh, I cannot remember her name. What is it? Uh, G- Gerd? Gerd? I'm going to call her Gertie for future. You can call her Gertie, but uh, we're going to call her. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we'll call her. Uh, Doc and Gertie. <laughs> Doc she's and got, Gertie. She's got the. She's quite honestly. I liked her character as, as a supporting character for his doctor role. She had this wonderful little prosthetic arm. And this is where that motion capture comes in. You have a hard time telling CGI from the real thing. And she's. I mean, her, her, her prosthetic, quite honestly, is made for medical c- cybernetic work and she's just going to town you know putting tubes back in measuring them re-putting you know cutting off excess that she doesn't need and eventually doc Ito puts this quite honestly beautifully carved body on who is now alita and and i have to talk about that because we talked a little bit and i'm going to recap it because editing might cut it down since we've already been recording for an hour. Um, Alita, the cat Alita gets an upgrade to daughter Alita, and we and I feel like we need to talk about that a little bit, and I think we also need to talk about this a little bit because yeah, so uh, that that body when yeah, you talk about you're, beautifully you're carved, used to the top. I I saw the. The bottom parts for the first time, and I, and I w- and when you're mind you, we saw this in 2D. We didn't see this in 3D, and I know some people would probably have gone see this just for the 3D, you know, epic moments. But you look at the intricate, you know, inlay and carving, and it's just quite honestly, damn. And I love art. I, I mean, that's what I love about you know CGI and motion capture. It's just there's some things that now you know since Avatar has evolved. And you're able to put such fine night and beautiful detail into some work. Because it quite honestly, it looked like she was uh, made of ivory. Yeah. And had, you know, like brass and opal inlay. And it's like, hot damn. <laughs> and uh, spoiler, obviously, this whole thing is spoiler. Yeah. Um, it's funny because we talked about how Alita got her name from the cat. And now we get this really interesting thing. Shirin and Dr. Ito actually, in this movie, are ex-husband and wife. They had a daughter, Alita, who was killed, unfortunately, by one of Ito's patients. And in all honesty, I welcome that change. Mm -hmm. I'm going to challenge anyone who doesn't like that change because it actually draws you closer to Shirin. Mm -hmm. Now... And Shirin is played by... uh... The very beautiful uh, Sarah Connolly. One of the things that it was very cool is um, how casual the movie was too. It, when I say casual, I mean costume-wise. You know, just basic doctor scrubs. You know, doctor's coats, tray shirts, jeans, jackets. It's very hard to actually place where they would have you know this because it's it's um, it, it was such a just a. I don't want to say Maj Posh because that, that makes it sound dirty. It was a melting pot. A collaboration. Pot. A collaboration of... It was it was really a melting pot of different cultures yeah. and societies because... Be- because the way they describe it, because in the opening of it, they actually say, you know, after the fall, and I'm saying that as in big quotes, you know, because that's what they used. It was capital V, capital fall, <laughs> which apparently, from what we understand in the movie, was a great war that caused... Pretty much everyone on Earth to gather under Zalem because it was the last standing, quote unquote, standing, floating city in the sky. So last great floating city in the sky. So apparently there were obviously others that were floating. And to me, the way they make it sound in not only the OVA but also in the movie, and I was hoping you'd also be able to clarify the manga, is that it's the social hierarchy that they have. So you have the upper class maybe semi middle class upper middle class in Zalom and then you have the lower middle class and then obviously the dregs of the pot so to I, speak I'm gonna say this as kind of like a, a little manga spoiler in <laughs> Yeah, 
Yeah, you're good. Okay. But that's, that's kind of the weird society that Zolom is, is um, it's that, and it's like, it's it's almost like... Uh, now, now I'm kind of curious what he said. He's, he's making weird faces over well, here. He's got my attention. <laughs> we'll call it paradise. Okay. We'll call yeah, it paradise. But even, even, so, even so, with the design of what they did with you know Zolom in the movie, it was... Almost like it was carved for this guy. Because you they show the edges of Zalem and they show some of the city line on it. And then as they go into the funnel of where the trash comes to, you just see it kind of degrade. And then you can see how it's, you know, okay, now you're getting towards the asshole of <laughs> of Zalem. Where all the shit comes out. <laughs> yep. Can I say that on YouTube? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you can. It, it's, it's kind of funny because really... Uh, Zolom sh- shitting on the scrapyard is more than metaphorical. <laughs> it's... That's the other thing. They don't in, in the in the Alita Battle Angel the movie 2019. They don't call it the scrapyard. They call it Iron City, which is weird. And the other thing that the other thing I loved about this was, um, even though Iron City is the quote unquote slums of you know this post apocalyptic society, let's put it that way. Um, you don't feel like it's a post-apocalyptic society. It's like a city. It's like a society that has kind of come back together, rebuilt what they could, saved what they could. Because there's a wonderful ruined church. I'm just gonna go ahead and show. Yeah, show. Uh, show my, uh, Yeah. So this yeah. is Iron City from uh, the view of the church with Alita and who in in the movie here is called Hugo H U G O. Um, she he takes her to this spot. And he goes, "This is my favorite spot in the whole city." And you can see, you know, they've tried to um, rebuild. And um, if you look over here, I, I get like you know trailer park kind of ish, and I, I almost get like a Ready Player One the stacks yeah. sort of feeling from it. Over on the yeah. right hand side of your screen is where he's yeah. talking about. And then um, you know you can see the piping, and you see you know how they've tried and how they've kind of come together to recreate a, a market square in the very bottom center and it's just you see almost everything and how a city that was probably at once a ruin has come back kind of recovered so i mean they they show it and they say it show they show the light of what is ruined and they also show what is the you know the dark side the the slums the dirt the un, the the bad guys yeah yeah and you know they 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 do it so well. I would really love to know like some of the locations they used for this movie. It also brings to that that pot that you know that melting pot uh, society, because if you look through the scenes, you don't see one language. No. You see various languages. As a matter of fact, I, Alita we, even talks about yeah. Why are there more than one? Why are language? there so many people? And why are there so many languages? Well, quite honestly, shit happened. Yeah, <laughs> and this is the last great place on earth. Yeah, pretty much. And in all honesty, like from the ground level, yeah, it looks like a really hap- happen and hit place. Yeah, if you've ever been to a bazaar, which um, I, I don't know a lot of people that have been Constant, outside. Uh, a good example would be uh, Constantinople. Thank you. Per- yes, perfect. Um, what was Istanbul now Constantinople? But that's nobody's business but the Turks. Istanbul was Constantinople. Now it's Istanbul, not Constantinople. Hey, uh, at one point, you know, they were called the crossroads of the world. Yes. So because I mean, everything traded through Istanbul and Constantinople. And uh, it felt like that. If yeah. you've ever been to a bazaar, it looked bright and colorful and beautiful. And People t- trying to get your attention to sell you stuff that you don't need. Yeah. Uh, the- <laughs> In other words, a mall. Yeah, mall <laughs> kiosks. Mall. I was just about to say, no, no, I'm good. I don't no, need I'm any not, perfume. Not, yeah, I don't no. need hair straightener. I'm fine. No, I like we're not, it. We're not talking like the flea market type. We're talking, you know, hey, these people are trying to make a living. Yeah, and it was it was really cool seeing that. And uh, in all honesty, I mean, ugh, let's be honest, and we're, we're just going to be honest for, for just a second. In the manga, scrap the scrapyard, I yeah. mean, it was visibly hell it was on hell on earth and it yeah. was the darkest most lonely place ever and i mean we go from that to this it's almost the same thing but on the ground level 
you don't get no. that dirty, that no. deep down destroyed ruin of what was once a great city on Earth. And, and one of the things I do like about uh, the movie over the OVA is they do give you a sense of, okay, there is even light in the darkest of places. And a great example of this is Dr. Ito's uh, operating room and his office. Because in the anime, they make it dark and foreboding. And, oh, this is like where death comes to visit. And really, in the movie, it's he's got bright, colorful walls. Alita's room is beautiful. Pink. It's, it's pink. Beautiful. It, I mean, yeah. I mean, we're talking like Victorian-style furniture. And mind you, I thought it was kind of funny how she woke up. She's like, what? Who? <laughs> I have a body. <laughs> and, and she's learning how to walk again. And, and it's amazing because, like, she doesn't need help. No. It's, it's I guess, like, when, I guess when you get a cyborg body, motor system functions don't uh, degrade, I guess. It, it mm. depends body yeah. to body. I yeah. mean, I've never had a prosthetic other than these yeah, glasses. And, and one, of the, one of the great things is how they really introduced Dr. Ito's background as, you know, hey, I'm a, you know, cyborg doctor. I work on cyborgs is Alita comes downstairs and it's this beautiful staircase with this very ornate like eagle type uh, railing and it's you know it's iron railing it's cast iron and you know Dr. Gertie or Nurse Gertie and uh, Dr. Ito are working on a patient who I guess lost his arm during a farming accident and he's just got this you know this new pincer claw like yeah I'm gonna go play the you know catch a claw game and he's like hey and this is where it, you know this is where I compare it to yeah exactly. <laughs> he's like hey doc uh, you know I can't pay you right now here's some oranges from the field and he's like well I'm not starving yet but yeah. he's like I will take some oranges so just pay me when you can and just in case you haven't realized the OVA and the movie are very much the same because the ad the adaptation source mm -hmm. is the same it's yeah. the first. Uh, I'm going to say the, the OVA was definitely the first two, maybe three uh, volumes of battle of uh, Gun Dreams. And then the movie went a little further in some areas. But we're going to talk about that. I'm going to get a little nitpicky. Be prepared. <laughs> so I'm going to go on with um, character interaction here, uh, starting with, you know, where we're at in the movie, talking about it is, you know, Dr. Ito, Nurse Gertie, and uh, Alita. Now, at this point, Alita has no memory. She's like, who are you? Who am I? Where am I? What's this? What's that? I'm hungry. <laughs> sort of thing. And, you know, the doc's like, yeah, let's, let's go sit down. We, we need to talk. And you see a very, like, father-daughter sort of relationship form. And I give that to credit of uh, Ro uh, Rosa Salazar and uh, Christopher Waltz for his uh, as Doc Ito. Um, but he, he asked her, you know, how, is your, how do you feel? Do you, how's your motor skills? Any anything anything off? So he's asking like the you know the typical doctor questions that you would you know expect it when somebody comes out of you know an, like an anesthesia. Mind you, I've been there. I know what that, that's like. If it's like getting hit by, if you ever been, you know, run over by a truck or <laughs> woken up from a hangover, that's pretty. That's pretty close to it. So they sit down. And he's like, "Who am I?" Uh, we were hoping you'd tell us. And she's like, "I got nothing. I have no memories. I'm like, I'm, I'm lucky I can walk." And a doctor, he just gives her this look like, "Oh, this one's all you, dog." <laughs> she's like I want nothing to do with this I'm gonna go check on a patient I'll see you later yep and so he's like well here eat an orange and I give her credit because I couldn't do it I've and trust me I've tried to do this she takes just a <sighs> bite out of an orange peel and all <laughs> but Doc Ito says the funniest thing ever well it looks like your taste receptors are working correctly <laughs> He's like, here, try it. It's a little better without the peel. <laughs> so he peels it for, her and they, you know, and they go. He's like, and she, she, she's, uh, for, you know, first thing you got your memory, and you lose your memory. Like, ooh, I love oranges. <laughs> he shows her around Iron City. Uh, shows her, you know, talks about the dangers of it. It, it. There's just a lot of connection going on there. I would like to say, and we run in, and when that's when we see our first glimpse of Hugo. Hugo is played by, oh, good lord, I'm going to butcher his first name, Kean Johnson. 
Which, by the way, yeah. Kean Johnson, you did a good job as yes, Hugo. Yes, you did it. I was uh, shipping quite for honestly, you, man. Kean, I, I give you credit, man. Bomb ass acting. Um, I loved you way better than the Hugo OVA version. You weren't a, as much as a prissy little bitch. Yeah, this is very true. <laughs> um, uh, you came off as that that cool guy, hard working dude. You know, you know. I, I know my. I know the streets. He's my people. Yes, uh, not an everyman, but like a uh, a young man that's seen a lot. Yes, and this is where I'm in a state of very welcome change. Um, in the there anime, a lot of welcome changes in this movie. <laughs> yeah, in the anime and in the manga, uh, Hugo is like 15 years old. He's young. I like the fact that he's portrayed more as like a maybe 17, early, 18-ish? maybe early twenties. Even yeah, individual. That, that's as kind of high as I would go. I I would say maybe as young as seventeen, but I would also I wouldn't go any higher than maybe like twenty three. Yeah, and, and that was a welcome change mm-hmm. because there's a lot of scenes where there's a lot of wisdom shown through on his character and. In the, in the manga, it's innocence spoiled. That's what it is, and they kind of wrote it differently in this movie, mm-hmm. which I really jive with. Hugo then takes it upon himself to get to know Alita and, and kind of influences her to make her own decisions. And, you know, it's all right. You know, Doc knows him pretty well. Uh, so, he, you know, she, he lets her go out a couple times. But he's like, don't be, you know, be home. Before, before dark, dark because you know they still play that role of hey there is a serial killer out there he's ki- that has killed six women to date watch a warning watch out and it's like like old school poster flyers flying through the streets like you see you know in some dirty new york back alley no offense no offense to new york but um some dirty hey, alley i watched a lot of television <laughs> something on uh law and order yeah, it, that's that's kind of where I put it. Yeah, and it's it's really borderline SVU at that point. Yeah, with yeah. this and and uh, so we go uh, a few scenes later. We go into Alita learning more about you know how is she powered because in the OVA they say oh the only thing that's powering you know a cyborg is the spinal cord and the brain, whereas in with it, at least Alita's uh, scenario, she is something unseen. There are something that has not been seen in a long, long time. So we're gonna go bust into the manga a little bit. Um, originally, when they do the brain scans on her, it's teased that she could be over two hundred years old, based on some dating on her brain. And there's a weird coding on her brain that they can't explain. Um, and I'm not going to get into too many manga spoilers because I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you all know. You need to go read the manga. Um, the movie is really enticing for you to want to learn more. And I, it's not it's not one of those, like, buy my manga scenarios. Yeah, no, no, no. It's, there's definitely no, like, you know. Because they actually, they're building up and making this sequel material, which 20th Century Fox, 20th Century Fox... I need, I need to beg to you. 20th, please, 20th please. 6th Century Fox. We're begging. We're begging. We need a sequel. We Don't need, leave us hanging, man. We need more than a sequel. We need a franchise. Trilogy we, at minimum. That's at all minimum. we're asking. Please, we're, we're begging. Please, we, 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 we love you. And we will, um, we will massage the feet of 20th Century Fox. You will get my $14 out of the movie ticket. Every time. Every time. Plus uh, popcorn and drink. But they, they allude to that in the in the manga pretty early on. I, I don't know if the author had an idea of where he was going. The but, author, by the way, has seen this movie at least 15 times that I've heard of. And he loves it. Yes. And um, I don't know. He probably, he probably goes at least, what, once a day? Maybe. Um, but it, it's one of those weird things where it's like, I don't know if he knew where he was going in the manga, but it really seemed like it. Mm-hmm. And this movie has... Uh, literally just 10 plus years of material to go on and it's not holding back no and uh, james cameron uh, um, quite honestly yeah you see this thumb i i had another oh 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 what's this two thumbs up sir so as, as we follow the ova 
Doc Ito's seen sneaking out of the house. And, you know, it's, what? What you doing, Doc? And, and in the movie, this scene plays out a so little a little <laughs> different. Just a little different. Yeah, just, just like, I wouldn't say a little different. I would say with more detail. More detail. Because the first time she's he is seen, he's seen coming back. And he has got blood just dripping down, like, dripping down his hand. You can see it on the back side of the pinky. It's, it's coming down. Yeah, so, and and it, same thing. Like, well, what happened to your arm? Yeah. How did you hurt it? He didn't want to answer. Yeah, it, it's always like, oh, it's nothing. It was just an accident. Alita, is, her curiosity, I think, kind of you know, it gets the moment of curiosity killed the cat. But we we start seeing a lot of her development very early on, especially when she's hanging out with Hugo, and we get introduced to the Centurions. But the the Centurions are. Oh my God! They're Ed two oh nine on steroids. I, I don't remember. Stop. And, Present your hall pass. And you can you can <laughs> correct me in the comments down below. Uh, I don't remember the Centurions ever being in the manga. I do remember the the government having some uh, fancy robots, but I don't remember them like that. Not like that at all. And Six light. Uh, what, 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 uh, hexapedal. Were uh, they hexapedal? Yes, they were six-legged. Oh man! I mean, they were just. Ugh. And so, if you as you can see, we got Alita here when seem very fine latex, and uh, thank you for making that. The you're way welcome. It was. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rosa. Rosa Salazar is such a hottie in this. And yes, I realize her eyes are made bigger than they are, they're, they actually are, but that's following along with the fact that she's a cyborg. Anyways. As you can see, the Centurions are, you know, they are some serious, you know, B, what, like you said, B-23 on steroids, right? Oh, I said, I said Ed 209. Oh, Ed 209, my bad. I'm, I'm the one I'm thinking you, B-23. You, you went somewhere completely yeah, I different did. Sorry. making model entirely. <laughs> <laughs> Stop. Present hall pass. Yes. Yeah, these guys are seriously present your hall pass. I may be wrong, but I could have sworn the first one we saw in the movie was uh, Hexapedal. You know, six legged. You know, it could have been um, because essentially what it is is Hugo is showing her around and she sees a doggy and they're eating a she's eating a wrap and I don't know what kind of wrap but looked good though. It looked like a chicken wrap. Yeah, and it, it made and me she, want. You know, it made me want here, some chicken. Oh, you <sighs> hungry? And she doggy came right up to her and gum, 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 and automatically made a friend. I mean, that's you know right there. You got me as an animal lover. You know, hey dog, check please. I'm good. And, uh, you know, she, you know, performs these badass martial arts moves to save a dog from getting squashed from, you know, Ed, the Ed unit, <laughs> the Centurion. Yeah. And, you know, she's, you know, slides underneath it, waits for an opening slot, you know, roll, battle rolls right back out and says, hey, uh, what's up, Hugo? <laughs> you know, like, you know, nothing happened. And she's like, what's that? And it's like, oh, those are Centurions. They have guns. Watch out. Don't break the law. <laughs> yeah. Essentially. Pretty much. Essentially, they do act as, you know, the, not the city police force, because that's the, the hunter-warrior jobs. Uh, but. Uh, they are government issue uh, sentries, essentially. Yeah. That make sure that the factories are running the way they're supposed to. Yeah, and the laws are upheld. Mm -hmm. And we do see that, you know, they do uphold the law, essentially, of the factory. Anyways, we get on to uh, that part, and the doc, she actually comes home one night late, and... Wait, I gotta show, I gotta, I gotta show that, that expression he's got on yeah. his face. And th this is great, he's like, it's got that expression like, where have you been? I thought I told you you'd be home before night. We call, Sorry, I lost track of time, Dad. <laughs> we, call this, uh, we call this image... Late Night Edo. Late Night Edo. But as you can see, you know, this is after he's, you know, he's been hurt you know, on the job. He's got the bandage on his arm. But, but uh, going going on with the story, you know, it, it's, it's you start to get this. This uh, is a two-hour movie, mind you. Come on, we got a lot to talk about here. <laughs> we do. We got a lot to unpack. Yeah. But. Uh, My brain is. But there's there's a lot of welcome, a lot of welcome changes. Very um, welcome changes. Oh, man. Yeah. Um, Ito's hammer. Yes, so we get to the point where uh, 
Alita follows Ito on one of his late night excursions. And yes, I do mean it like that. Late night excursions. Because he's got the briefcase on the wheels. He's got the trench coat, the fedora. I got instant nostalgia because my first thought went to Raphael, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, 1990 movie. Raphael going to the movies. Man, who makes this crap? You know, in disguise. Like, nobody needs to know who I am. I'm, I'm, I'm ooh, playing it cool, yo. And, you know, she goes out to the balcony, sees him, and she's like, you know what? Following you, Dad! <laughs> she wants to know what's going on. Why is my dad being secretive? Why is my dad hiding this stuff from me? You know, and she's, you know, she's approached him. You know, what are you doing tonight, Dad? Hmm. What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? What are you doing? <laughs> you know, he's got, she's got that, you know, curiosity killed the cat syndrome going on. She really does. But yeah. don't worry, innovation brings them back yeah. to life. Ido is following the lead, essentially. You know, because another woman has been killed and butchered, essentially, for parts. Uh, yeah, something. So something he terrible. follows her into a back alley, and we see him open up this briefcase. And this is this is the detail I love about movies that some of these big name. I mean, you get a big budget, you are able to do some awesome stuff. Actually, let me phrase that: you're able to do some awesome shit. <laughs> That's how excited I get. Because I, as a hobby, I you know me, I make co- I make costumes, so, yeah. and I've made some pretty cool costumes before. Yeah. Um, so uh, just a little background: I'm a, I'm a member of the Five Hundred First Legion, and I make Star Wars costumes. And one of my best costumes I've made so far is my Republic Commando boss from the video game. Beep. And I get so many compliments. I'm like, oh my god, how did you do this? And I'm like, I set it on fire, and I, I literally <laughs> did. I literally did set my costume on fire. Follow him on his channel. Yes, he I, has tutorials on this stuff. Yeah, I'm, I'm. I've only got two videos up. Bear with me, all right. But it, more is coming. More coming. More coming. This will probably be also tagged with me in it. Um, so oh, it will be. <laughs> he opens up this briefcase, and the lining, the inside lining, is like that velvet silk cut. You know, black box cut out piece by piece equipment box, like you would see like a professional performer use like for a guitar or for a drum and it's just so that wonderful maroon color that wonderful you know deep red like it should be so he goes out he's putting his you know his awesome badass hammer i mean we're talking war hammer you know you know world of warcraft style we're talking here Mm -hmm. with you know uh not steampunk what was the word you used uh cyberpunk. cyberpunk cyberpunk yes you know, it's got this, like, he's, it's very detailed. It's got a trigger on it to activate the thruster. And it's just, I want to go impale something right now with that thing. That was so cool. It was it was a rocket hammer. And yeah. one, of the, one of the things that they added to it that I like is on the neck of the hammer, um, they actually added three gnarly, it almost looked like tooth yeah. spikes yeah. at the bottom so you don't break the head off the neck. <laughs> but it was, it was like... <laughs> Yeah. And, and you know Alita sees her sees him putting this thing together and this beautiful woman is walking through a dark alley quite honestly she has no business doing whatsoever yep and you know she's going no dad and unfortunately he she hears him scatters runs off and he turns the corner and she's gone yep and he's like literally oh shit yeah it's a trap it's a trap it's a trap and next thing we know there's three cyborgs one of which being uh, Romo Romo. And then we've got um, Garishka. Garishka. Yeah. Oh my and, God. And Garishka kind of hides in the shadows at first. He's in this very dark cloak. Now, the size of it, if you've ever seen Gundam Wing and Endless Waltzes, this is the way I, this is my first thought of it. Yeah. He's in this cloak, and my first thought was, holy shit, it's Sandrock. Sandrock. And it's Gundam Sandrock yep. under a cloak. No. It's, it's the action figure Broly under a cloak. Yeah. Because Garishka looks. Quite honestly, like an action figure. Like, Manliest man to man the manly I mean, man. Ball joints, you know, he's got, you know, by, you know, dissecting, you know, shoulder plates, pectoral plates, very cool, you know, uh, tattoo designs. I don't even know if there's this flush, quite honestly. I mean, it makes good not having hair either. To be yeah. Honest. So, I, I mean. As I mean, opposed to, and I mean, I, I love... Garishka in the anime, but yeah, but this Garishka, I mean, it's so much so cooler. Cool. Yeah, so cool. And so his, his companions, one of which uh, Romo, quite honestly, just looks like a psychopath. 
I wish I downloaded that that picture of him now, but yeah. he does. He looks like I'm uh, gonna edit it later. He looks like a he looks like a crazy pants. Yeah. He and, he looks like a guy who quite honestly just wants to like suck you through a, a crazy straw. Mm-hmm. You know, crazy. You know, suck your blood through a crazy yeah. straw through your jugular. And they're like, because he's he's the one saying, "Oh, I want a piece of her." He's yeah. the one going, "I want to eat her. I want a taste of her." And you know, the other uh, chick who comes out and she's got a weird name too. Um, she unveils her uh, self, and she's and, got this weird. Crazy metal upper body with giant knife hands. Literally, N- Nisana is her name. Yeah, she quite Pretty honestly. Mantis knife that's, hands. What I, that's what I love doing it with. Alita, she's. I mean, mind you, we watch Ido go at it with his hammer for what, a good two, three minutes. Yeah, easily. And he's making some damage. I mean, wham! Give me a hammer. I want a hammer now. I want. I, I want that hammer. Damn it! I want to make that hammer so bad. <laughs> I'm like, uh, we were looking at actually source material earlier. I'm, I'm, I'm seriously thinking about making this hammer. <laughs> you should. I really should. You should. Uh, so yeah, you can tell I like the hammer. <laughs> Big guy, I like hammer. <laughs> um, but we see, you know, Doc Ito gets hurt, and and uh, uh, Alita don't like that. Mm, nope. She's like, don't hurt my daddy. Yep, Garushka's I mean, holding him up against a wall with yeah. like he's like three watch, fingers. Watch, he's like, yeah, he's like literally holding, like holding her up and watch her die. Really? And he's like, Ugh, yeah. So I mean, she whoops. I mean, she wipes the floor with Romo first, yeah. like three moves. And well, when when Ido tells her to run away, what she does is she uses Panzerkunst, which is the martial arts that she learned in Mars, mm-hmm. and she runs and does this. Spoiler alert! Does this flying, freaking. It's, it's a flying sidekick, essentially. It, no, it's a flying double kick. If you ever played Fatal Fury, it's what Andy Bogard does. It's just... And yeah. just All right, you bastard. This time... So, if you know anything about martial arts and you've watched this movie, you will see what I at least saw as five distinct martial arts styles. And in this scenes, I was seeing at least Taekwondo, Hungar... And uh, Northern Shaolin. Mm-hmm. Northern Shaolin Kung Fu. So, I mean, I don't know if you know anything about any of those. There's a move she uses where she takes it and uses both her body to push away an enemy. And it's literally two fists. And it's literally you extend the full thing. Mm-hmm. And that's a hungar technique. Yeah. That is, that is a straight up hungar technique. You get low to the ground, center your, center your body mass, and boom, you push your enemy off. The other ones are... Uh, that we saw at least through the movie were taekwondo and uh, jujitsu. Mm-hmm. I don't. I won't. I, it's hard to tell because she doesn't really get into any grappling. Yes, she does. Well, um, not not ground grappling that makes it distinctive uh, well, Brazilian jujitsu. But we uses, know at least she's using some jujitsu. She's using uh, what looked like kenpo on Tanji, and I kind of felt bad for him. And they were playing motorball <laughs> yeah. in the streets. They because... have this. They have this scene where it's like a little motorball skirmish, and she's like, "Ooh, what's that?" She gets like she gets about excited about motorball as I do about that hammer, yeah. <laughs> about Ido's hammer. But we see her, and she uh, literally just pummels Romo into the ground. I mean, face, unrecognizable. Face she's got bl- into the... blood oh. all over the knuckles. And she's ready to go for round two. Yep. And that's when... Um, What's her name? Nicaea? Nicena? Nice. Oh, good lord. N-Y-S-S-I-A-N-A. We're calling her Miss Mantis from now on. Yes, I'm going to go with that. Red Mantis. Let's go with that. She had the red cloak. Yep, Red He's Mantis. The, yep. And, good you know, enough. she tries to hit her. Red Mantis does this weird flip, and she becomes, you know, Red Mantis Spider Lady, because now she sticks to walls. She even hisses it. Yeah, it's, it's her so like, weird. so primal. I don't know who the, uh, the actress is Isa Gonzalez. Yeah. And that is a very pretty lady. So... <laughs> I'm, I'm just saying, that is a very pretty lady. <laughs> I don't care if she was a cyborg. <laughs> she had legs. She did have legs. That was all that was uh, humanoid of her, was her <laughs> legs I think, and her head. I think from before, before the CGI kicked in, yeah, we yep. had, we, she had very nice legs. And those <laughs> heels was, were helping. Yep, those those and three uh, stilettos were helping. Yep, and all she was was legs. <laughs> hey, are you complaining? Even you are married. I mean, you still look. Uh, I, I didn't have a choice but to look at, <laughs> at the uh, mal-shapen body so, horror coming at so our she, main she protagonist. Fights, <laughs> she fights off, you know, uh, Red Mantis and whoops her ass too. He said it, not me. But her head was stuck to this <laughs> yeah, her door head, and like, her body did, into the door and just 
body drops. Drops. And and Garishka's like, okay, I'ma kill you now. <laughs> and it, it doesn't go very well for him. Alita nope. takes just a moment and Dang. she has a rage moment where she starts remembering. Oh, she yeah, she has a flashback and this flashback I, it plays a huge part for her story. And that's what I love that's another thing I love is her little flashback episodes. Even though she didn't have too many of them, but it was the moon. Was it four? It was. It was the moon. moon. It was training, training with. I'm not going to say training. names for spoiler reasons. Moon and it was training. the Zolom pipeline. Zolom. There's one more. No, that was it. No. Yeah, sure. It was moon. It was I the training on the ship, and then it was the uh, the Zolom pipeline. Anyways, uh, you know she's. She's on this moon, and apparently on the moon, there was this huge battle between, you know, Alita's people and, I want to guess, say, the Earth Alliance or Earth Federation. <laughs> so, she, you know, they show her she's fighting on this moon, and, and it's just, I realize the moon has, you know, less gravity than we do, we do here on Earth, but still, she whooped some ass. Yeah, she did. She uh she made short work of a lot of yeah. humans. And, and so really cool. we, we, we get to this point where at, you know, after one she's you know had her little flashback and she two whoops uh Gar- Garishka's ass and you know, to the point where he has one arm and he is fleeing underground and and dad's like, Whoa. Yeah. We need to talk. Yep. And she's like, Yeah, we need to do you got she's like, Lucy, you got some splaining to do you know, I mean, and so they go to the. They go to the. They bounty, go to the factory. They go to the factory is what it is. Yeah. And you so, know, and he's, to collect a bounty, apparently you have to have the severed head of your. Uh, your kill. Your kill, and they have to have a bounty on it, apparently. Yeah. Or you get in trouble. You you do get in trouble. They have to have a bounty on their head. You have to bring in proof of the bounty. Yeah. A lot of the time, you need to bring back the brain because with a lot of cyborgs and apparently an ear don't work no more. Yeah. Um, you have to bring back brain matter to positively ID mm-hmm. the individual. That was directly stated in the manga. Yeah, because they said you know, ret, uh, you know, facials, uh, facial, can, the faces can be changed, hands print, you know, fingerprints can be changed, hands can be changed, everything, can, can, everything can be changed, everything yep. you know. The only thing that can't be changed. wise can be changed, but the only thing it can't change is the brain. brain. So I mean, that makes sense. DNA, yeah. you can't change DNA. Well, That's essentially, what it comes down to. Plug your fingers. We know differently, don't we? Beep. You're good now. Okay. Yeah, so I mean, I mean, I'm mean, speaking scientifically wise, you can't change DNA. No, so. Not at all. Uh, Not at all. Yeah, so I mean, that that's the one that makes a great way. The other thing they don't do in I don't know if they do it or not in this movie. When Alita decides, hey, I'm going to become a hunter warrior, she's just gets an ID card. I don't know if she gets her. Well, they don't show it in the movie, and good. that was one of the things I was. Maybe really that's the deleted hoping. scenes we get when, when the DVD comes out. Well, I, I can. I'm. I'm hoping the PG-13 version of Alita was really good, and it was. I mean, the the manga is straight body horror. Like straight body horror. If if you think that Berserk manga is bloody, read the first three volumes, especially I do think Berserk is bloody. Thank in you. Spe- especially of the motorball stuff in Alita, you want to see actual like straight gore and body horror. That's where you're gonna find it more so than Berserk, uh, and it's it's really gnarly. And I'm kind of hoping that when it comes out on Blu-ray DVD, which I am personally going to buy that they do an r-rated or non-rated release director's cut director's cut because her getting an id card kind of felt weird because yeah she's supposed to get her brain tattooed that's supposed to signify her as you are a hunter warrior and that is something that kind of sticks around in the manga i'm manga spoilers not going to talk about brains and jars but <laughs> it, it is one of those things that's where also a movie spoiler too <laughs> but that's later on and, and, and that was another weird thing and i'm gonna have you all plug your ears or i'm gonna have him plug his ears when i talk about some of the things that i i, I, I nitpicked i'm running out of tunes here quite honestly <laughs> i'm gonna be you guys are gonna get tired of hearing you know you know benji or whatever <laughs> today and, and here's my first gripe with the movie and i gotta talk about it because Garishka goes over to Vector, and we find out that Vector and Garishka are pawns for 
Uh, it's not the word they used. Puppets. There you go. And, and I'm going to put up major, okay. major spoilers. If you're not paying attention, you'll miss where he's being a puppet. Because, or at least where you see him, they become the puppet. Yep. You have to pay attention to the, pu- the uh, what's the color part? The iris of the, the iris, eye yeah, turns the iris. blue. Yeah, I, and we're not, when I say, when we say blue, we mean like ice blue, like, damn. Now, now there was another YouTuber that I watched put a, uh, a very non-spoiler review on this video. Mm-hmm. And I, I, I posted something because Vito... Vito, by the way, if you're watching this, um, I'd love to talk to you about this more because, honestly, like, I want to do some theory videos with you based on Alita. I think that would be really freaking cool. If anyone needs me, I'll be building a model later (laughs) for that part. But, uh, essentially, Destiny Nova is using these individuals as puppets. And we don't see Destiny Nova until uh, the very end of the movie oh in the manga in the movie at least in the movie in the manga we don't see him until a little dream sequence that alita has and i'm gonna leave it at that because and and i even on the post i put manga spoiler and i spaced it all the way down and i was like please don't tell me nova is in this movie because Nova is not supposed to be there at the beginning. He's one of those background entities that's... He's he's a protagonist, antagonist. He sort definitely of, was a background entity, that's oh, for sure, in this one. Man, but he wasn't supposed to be involved this early on, and that kind of upset me because... That's what kind of... Like, that's what you, like you said at the movie, is you're like, uh-oh. And I went, what? What do you mean? He's like, it's dead, you know, Nova. I'm like, oh, okay. So maybe we're getting a sequel. Well, maybe we'll get a sequel now. But it, it 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 feels like sequel baiting. Yeah. Every time they bring up Nova, and when we get to the third act, it feels very much I don't like the second one yet. <laughs> it feels like, please make me, please let me make more movies. It it, it feels like a love letter to the the produ- to the uh, to the 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 production agency. Let me make more movies, and I hate that. I do with a burning passion because I've only got two real gripes about this movie. The fact that Nova... Three. The fact that Nova was in it, Alita got into Motorball way early, and her sword. And when you see that Nova is using these people as puppets, which we we know from the manga isn't completely 100% unfeasible... It's still like mm, he shouldn't be interested in Alita yet. He's interested, but he shouldn't be interested yet. And when you see their eyes go blue, it's so trippy and it looks so awesome and it's super consistent. Um, I don't know if they used, I, I would assume they used After Effects and they wouldn't have used actual scleras or, or any sort of. Um, contact lens it's a really cool effect Mm -hmm. but it's just the fact that nova was there destiny nova should not have been there but that's my opinion take it away so yeah so we get vector and we get to meet vector for the first time in the movie and in doing second time second time my bad first time was when Uh, when he went to go pick up hugo yes and he was in the car actually sharin it was sharin and sharin and she crushed a cockroach with her leather glove. And left the glove there. I would have been kind of mad about that. After, you know, the fight with uh, Grishka, uh, Doc Ito takes Alita back and pretty much does a full scan on her. A full scan. And he finds something very interesting. He's like, oh, what you have here is you have, you know, your, your average teenager, teenage girl brain if they're ever... And he makes a very funny joke. Or at least I thought it was hilarious. <laughs> You know, if, if there ever is was, such one, you know, average teenager, you know, average teenager's girl, girl teenager brain, normal teenager nor, brain, yeah, yeah. normal girl teenager brain, if there is such one, and then he goes, "This is the interesting part. It's your core, your your, your heart. It, it's pretty much made of you know black matter." Yeah, and and it's like, hmm, you can and power, you, you, you can power, power, you know, the entire Iron City for years. Mm-hmm. You know, he's like. You have a very interesting body, and it doesn't say that like in a creepy "ooh, I want to get to know you better." It's more like, 
where did you come from? He's more cur is more that more of that you know, that curiosity uh, side of a doctor, you know, very a very scientific side. He's like, you know, I want to know more. <laughs> yeah, and the rest of us are going, yeah, we do too. Uh huh. Where'd she come from? <laughs> yeah. And 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 you know, he goes and she's like. He goes out. She, you know, Alita goes out. She learns, you know, how to play motorball. And they were having Hugo and his friends uh, Tanji and the girl Koyomi. She, yes, an Asian girl, uh, Lana Condor plays her. A uh, very cute girl, by the way. Uh, playing uh, a skirmish of what I like to call the backyard version of motorball because you know they're running on old skate ramps and. Quite honestly, look like pool sides, and they even had like a little cardboard ramp on cinder blocks. You know, yeah. as you did you know popping wheelies as a kid on your bike, and but they're doing these on like motorized rollerblades. That's the best way I could put it. And quite honestly, it reminded me of a, another anime I've seen, which came out way after uh, the original ba uh, Battle Angel uh, Gundam came out, which was called Air Gear. Oh yeah, you remember yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Air yeah, Gear. you know, motorized, you know, inlines yeah, essentially. Yeah. So it, it, that's what it reminded me of when they're putting, you know, she's got these three wheeled skates on that are motorized. I'm like, okay, this is, I'm kind of yeah. want me a pair of those too. Yeah. <laughs> Never happening though. But, you know, they, she learns how to play motorball. She, her and Tanji don't get along real well. Tanji's the, uh, uh, Hugo's, I guess, best friend and sidekick. But I would call them partners in crime. Ooh. Ooh. Okay, I'm going with it. Because <laughs> it's true. Chirin and Doc Ido are having... Oh, I see you gave our, you know, our, daughter's, our daughter's body to this girl. What's her name? <laughs> yep, and then the guilt that, begins that's where, Yeah, the guilt and the awkwardness begin. So apparently they had a daughter in this movie and... <sighs> there is There is feeling there and it's like... She's angry, and he's like, I don't really give a care what you say. I'm going to do what I do. We split up a long time ago. I don't know what your deal is. Because apparently she couldn't deal with the loss of, you know, her daughter. And, you know, he couldn't deal either. But he, you know, we, I guess compensate? Not compensate. Uh, yeah, no, compensating. Compensating yeah, guess, for his grief. Yeah, he, yeah, yeah okay, there we go. Yeah. Grief counseling. There we go. In his own form. In the form of that would be the finding the guy who killed his daughter, uh, the cyborg who he fixed, which quite honestly just should have left dead because he was a druggie. Well, and, and remember, Garishka was supposed to be the, the drug addict. True. Originally, and yeah. they, they had to shift that focus and make Garishka... A, Garishka got an upgrade, which was kind of weird. And that very was, long. It very took a long time for that upgrade, too. Yeah. And, 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 uh, I've, I've seen pit crews move faster than they have. Uh, well, remember they had to steal homeboys. Uh, yeah. So, they, so uh, as, a, as, a, as a thing, um, as a thing about that, you know, they take Alita to her first actual official hardcore motorball event. The way that happens, Vector actually talks to Hugo about it. Like, hey, so this girl Alita that you know, like she she's a pretty badass. I heard, individual. She, I heard she's badass. Yeah. You know, it would be really cool. You can get a sponsorship and get her into motorball because I'm looking for, what was it, a million credits? They they, they dumbed down yeah. the number. Something. Yeah, he's looking for... Uh, Do you remember the number? I think it was a million. Uh, like I'm looking for a million credits. And he was, like, only short, like, 900, like, only a th like 10,000. He was only short. So I'm, I'm guessing at that point the, the value scale was a little different than what was in the uh, OVA and the manga. Yeah. Because they were saying like 10 million chips, and he said he only he only, he only took like what five months to get that. Yeah, and in the OVA, and then he says he's been working most of his life to get the million. Yeah. So I'm like, is he making like a what a one chip like one credit a day? Yeah. They, in the movie, by the way, they call them credits. They don't call them chips. Yeah. But, so there was the other currency change there. But the way that he baits Hugo is is absolutely beautiful. Because For a bad guy, yes, yeah. it was beautiful. It was just very subtle and. Yeah. The way he talked, it was like, mm, talk me up more, baby. Because, you know, I, and I love what he says. 
I'd rather rule in hell than, than be a servant in heaven. Yeah. And, and you know, we could really do some damage here, you and I, together as business yeah. partners. And Hugo's and like, And the other you thing know, he was also worried about is because uh, the guy who was currently, you know, moving up in the ranks of Motorball was ruining uh, not just the winnings of Motorball, but also the ratings. And he was... Because in in the in the movie Vector is essentially running not only Iron City but Motorball, which was a really weird but kind of welcome change. Instead of him running the underground gladiatorial yeah. robot combat, he was running Motorball, and uh, we get to see some characters, uh, which again we get it's to see sequel a, baiting. We get to sequel baiting a, a bad ass action sequence. But before a Motorball, when we're getting there. Um, cause essentially the way he says it is you want to go to Zalem. I know you want your girlfriend to go to Zalem with you. You know, if she qualifies in motorball in a couple of months, as opposed to waiting another lifetime to get the credits, you'll have enough to go make to Zalem. Yeah. Make her champ, make her grand champion, make her grand champion. Yeah. You've got your ticket to Zalem. Yeah. And it was beautiful baiting because he, it, it, it's a line, a couple lines of dialogue but it's like we got her now in motorball, mm-hmm. and it, it, if you're not paying attention to the scene, it seems really contrived that she's getting thrown into the sport. Yeah, but it's and that Hugo building has up. all these connections inside, like the pits with you know all the motorball crew guy, the crew, with the crew, Drowskin, Drowskin, the the current grand champion, and. Um, which, the, by the, the way, the pit crews is like sequel baiting. Yeah. And all the pit crews, because like everybody's like, hey, 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 you go, what's up, man? How you yeah, doing? Yeah, yeah. And they're all chubby and friendly. And then finally, Tanji comes in while Alita is like starstruck and having her first like actual like geek out. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm, I'm, I remember my first geek out, and that was with Peter Mayhew. <laughs> so we're at the point where. Um, you know, she's at her first rollerball, and let me—I want to—I really want to go into this because I had a flashback of when I was still in school, and if anybody else remembers this, please comment, say, tell me, please tell me you like this. IGPX, the Immortal Grand Prix that was aired on Toonami back in the early two thousands. It was a racing combat show. It was a very short, fifteen minute. This is before like Cartoon Network's usual now 15 minute episodes of mechs fighting on a racetrack and it was cool i never saw it before are you kidding oh my god this guy lives under a rock i'm kidding well (laughs) no so so it it was very high pace i mean we're talking god that had to be 160 frames a minute if not or 160 frames a second Oh, on the, on the big screen? Easily. Yeah. Easily. 160 frames. Easily. We, we got to see this really amazing, like, we tried to find a Google image of it, and everything that we found was, was blurry. Really blurry. It was It was that fast. It, it was. It, it was. The best way, if you're, now, if you don't know, if you have never watched IGPX, the best way to describe this is rugby meets NASCAR meets inline skating. And that's kind of what motorball so is. So you have, you know, also with, you know, oh, and, um. Battle Royale, so so you have like a kind of like a force for hit there. So you have high speeds with you know a ball, and you know you've got what was it like nine players on a track, nine or ten something like that, something like that. And you know is Battle Royale survival of the fittest, you know trying to just I guess survive a few laps of this. One lap, a one lap. So, God, how long is that track then? Um, it's pretty cool because in the manga, and I know I keep going back to in the manga, they actually give uh, the author gives like a rule set of yep. what okay. motorball is, and, and that's one thing I really appreciate so, about the kind of like how uh, J.K. Rowling gives a breakdown of what is Quidditch. Yes, and uh, Bell Hufflepuff. <laughs> essentially, what it is is you have to get the ball into the goal, and you've got obstacles and essentially Obviously. combat, and mm-hmm. it is. At some point, Mortal Kombat yeah. killing is allowed, but I'm not going to yeah, say. Yeah, because we see some cyborgs get dismembered, and quite honestly, it's awesome because it's a sport. <laughs> yeah, it's not exactly frowned upon because um, there are two ways to win: get the motor ball into the goal, cool. or, or be, be the, the last, last person, last on man the track. standing. Yeah, and uh, it, it's really gnarly, really, 
really gnarly oh, when you yeah. think about it's it. It's so awesome. And we get to see this in uh, what felt like 4K, not smooth motion, excitement rammed yeah. right up your nostril. It was awesome. Yeah, like you're the hover cam, you know, side, you know, track side watching all this go down. And it, the announcer does a great job, you know, on, 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 you know, going with it. And the music score, you, you felt that whole that whole segment right there. Oh, yeah. And, and one thing that we haven't really talked about a lot is the score. The score in – we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit more in our comparison, but the score in the OVA was non-present where the score in the movie was omnipresent. And it felt like everything you were doing was accompanied by mm -hmm. some sort of emotion, by some note. Now, there are some parts of the score that are, you know, music that that uh, may or may not have been written for it and some of it by, uh, you know, some, some artists. But it still fit the scene. Very, very well. <laughs> and in Motorball, it fit the scene. Oh, yeah. I felt like I was on the track and I and you know, watching some of this You're going, go, 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 go. Murder, murder, murder. I mean, <laughs> go, go, go. <laughs> this is motorball, not murder ball. So. Oh, oh, oh sir, you don't know the rules. <laughs> no, I don't, because I never read the manga. <laughs> We find out that one of the one of the motorball characters has a has a, a very important plot piece to what happens later on in this movie, and it happens to be a limb, or I, I, I don't want. It sorry. was his hands. Yeah. So he essentially, um, if you've ever seen, uh, the best way I can describe it really is a weapon, is uh, a kusari gama. If you ever know what that is, it's a comma with a about a ten pound weight attached to a chain. But, but mind you, this is all five of the dude's fingers, and he shoots them at you know. And it seems like quite honestly, he's got an endless amount of chain that runs through his arm to, uh, to it, reach these. It, it looked about twenty feet, twenty three feet. Something it, like it was that. about twenty yeah. feet of just yeah, just and twenty it, feet and of I just love, anger. Did you see the? I don't know if they did it on purpose, but they kind of paid a homage to Scorpion. Get over oh, here! Wow. Yep. Yeah, <laughs> like he spears a guy and yanks his chain back, and just <laughs> rams his head into the ground. Mm -hmm. It's so awesome. So we get Sharin talking to Vector, and Sharin says, "Hey, you know he's got an integral part to one of our other projects that we need to complete. We could use this." So it's foreshadowing, <gasps> and then Vector goes up to. Uh, to Hugo whilst in the pit with all the other motorballists and we get to see foreshadowing and sequel baiting. Um, and, and I'm not saying sequel baiting as a bad thing, by the way. No. I'm literally hoping... We, you see these two faces? Have you seen how excited I have been? I want a fucking sequel. I want a goddamn sequel. James Cameron, are you listening? I mean, look at him. I haven't seen him this happy in like a month. So it cuts to, you know... <laughs> One of the hardest scenes to watch because now you see these four individuals ganging up on this poor guy. Coming he, out of a bar with three hotties. And it, one of them is actually thrown slung, slung over his shoulders. Oh my god. Like fireman carry. It's so amazing. He's like, <laughs> He's like yeah, yeah baby, let's go. I am living the life. Yeah. And, uh, you know. And he goes, hey, the hell are you? throws her down like like a sack of potatoes well and the other two run off. throws her down on her feet and then the other two help her up and they run off yeah and he starts to which i call bull crap and three inch stilettos they they start to try to throw down but he gets tased to the ground and the buzz saws come out well actually they throw them and they throw him <laughs> into a van and then tie him up, up with and his then own, well, yeah. Something. Like no, chain. they tie him up with a... Um, I can't remember. Like a chain? Yeah, it was like some heavy-duty chain. It was like quarter-inch chain. It was yeah. seriously it was, thick stuff. It was serious. And they start to surgically remove <laughs> by angle grinder his arms. And that is... Seriously removed? Dude, they were using a buzz <sighs> saw practically. Yeah. It, just, it was... You, watched, you were watching the blade heat up. <laughs> of course. When I say Had angle be... grinder, it wasn't really an angle grinder with a cutoff disc. It was an angle grinder with a, a chop saw. saw. Yeah. It was a chop saw attached to that thing. And that was really like... That was straight scary. <sighs> Because they, because you can see like his arms like doing this, like it's trying to, like he's trying to use it, yeah, and then it suddenly just goes, because just goes limp. One thing that uh, they need to, 
one thing that they explain in the manga, and I feel like they don't explain it a whole lot, is cyborgs, they, they can... They kind of get a phantom limb syndrome. They don't really feel a whole lot. They they do feel variances in temperature and pressure uh, based on that. But in this movie, they explain that cyborgs' receptors are way more pronounced, like a person's. <laughs> but uh, they they actually feel what's going on. Mm-hmm. So when this man is screaming in agony, it's because he feels that cutoff disc going through his shoulder all the way down to his arm so when his arm falls limp he lost that limb yeah there there's no longer a nerve connection to that limb he lost it and he feels it Mm -hmm. and you know hugo is is talking about how vector comes up from behind and the motorballist immediately knows he knows who he is. yeah he's like oh i should have known i should have known it was you vector you son of a bitch it was like damn and uh, vector just straight up kicks him in the face knocks his ass out no he kills him no no at first knocks his oh well first he knocks so him out so you talk to uh, uh, uh to hugo, hugo and his crew and then you and know give them, their, give them their cut for the for the uh, the the find and the, and the acquisition of said the finder's part. fee, yeah, finder's fee, the finder's fee for said arms, and then uh, he kills this guy in cold blood, and it's with a blowtorch. Yeah, it's not nice. Mm-hmm. It's not nice at all. But luckily, they, they don't even show that, but you get the idea. Yeah, it, like, remember, it's still P- it, it, it's still PG thirteen, mind you. We do get one F four in the entire movie, and we. It's Prominently des- get it. <laughs> and it's deserved. It totally deserved. It's deserved. Um, so at this point, I mean, Alita has pretty much gotten into her rebellious phase with her uh, daddy Ido. Yep, because now she's becoming a hunter warrior without anyone say so. Um, Mind you, it's after she wanting to team up with her daddy Ido to, you know, collect said bounties and help uh, Hugo get you Zong. Boy toy Hugo. <laughs> oh man i really shouldn't talk about them. that yeah so i guess we should really should go kind of into that because by this time we are we are seriously feeling a relationship here yes i'm actually some, shipping. Some attraction yeah but at this point yeah you are shipping for hugo and alita and uh it, 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 you're going yeah i want this i want this to happen and it doesn't feel forced it doesn't feel like it's 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 not contrived. Made to happen. It's not contrived, yeah. Yeah, it's not contrived. It feels like it's supposed to happen. And in the manga, you get a lot of build-up. I I know I keep going back to the manga (laughs) a lot, but... You and your manga. Hugo really feels like he's stringing her along because he just wants to go to Zalem, and he's kind of creeped out by her having a metal body. Yeah. It's not something that he's really like willing to experiment with. And I like how Tanji keeps calling her a hard body. Yeah. Hard body. Because we... we not, get... She's not stuffed and squishy. No. As a matter of <laughs> fact, um, we get it a lot in Last Order. Uh, I, pr- I prominently remember it in Last Order. A lot of the cyborgs call humans fleshies. Oh, you're, you're, well, you're flesh. We are kind of spongy. Yeah. You're flesh. I'm surprised that you move like that for being flesh. And it's it's one of those things where you get a really hard distinction between your cyborg and your human being. Mm-hmm. And now we're starting to get, like, these really interesting ties coming through. But before we go there, before she becomes a hunter-warrior, she actually goes out with uh, the, three, the three kids – to this site where there's some uh, Martian, Hugo. some Martian oh, technology yes, yeah, out uh, in in the Badlands, and they call it the United United Republic of Mars. Marsh. The, the United or Erm Erm yep Erm. They Erm. make fun of it Erm, and Erm. Uh, that's perfect. And you know, Alita lays eyes on it, and and it's like ding light bulb, something in the back of the brain, the memory, I guess started activating she's like i am talking to the ship and hugo even admits you know i'm hoping that this helps jog a memory well it does more than jog a memory she actually goes down into the ship activates the ship can read the language on the ship yeah and recovers a and mind you body. holds her breath for a remarkable amount of time 
Um, <laughs> like I wish I could hold my breath that long. Yeah. But but being being somebody who has dived before, uh, that's that's a very risky thing to do, especially what she did. You know, going into an unknown underwater, nonetheless, uh, wreckage. Well, for her, it wasn't unknown. Well, for her, yeah, but for us looking at it, it's like, ah, you couldn't pay me enough to do that. No. Not, not, there ain't enough scuba tanks in the world to get me under there. No, because she, she, it, it, yeah, no, we don't know where the breaches would be in the hull. Yeah. We don't know where the command center of that ship would be. And she's, she, she's looking at it like an old friend, like, oh, wow, I missed you. Where have you been? Yeah, and it was insane. And when you're looking at it above the, the water level of where this little lagoon is at, which I'm, I'm guessing because the war happened with Mars so many, you know, quite honestly, centuries, centuries. ago. Yeah, because they say, you know, the war happened 300 years ago is when the last great city fell. And uh, I'm, I'm going to go on a uh, speculation and just say, you know, this thing crashed and it caused a crater. The crater ended up filling up with water due to the nature around it. Probably. Because that was some seriously clear water. Yeah. It, it probably It's probably a uh, dead lake. You're probably yeah. absolutely correct. Um, so she comes out with what we find out is a berserker body. And that's after she's, you know, she's entered the ship, opened a door, found the command bridge with skeletons. Quite honestly, we're actually really pre- well preserved for being in a water esque environment well they were, in a wa- <laughs> they were a water-esque environment but i mean and then the monitors still kind of work you were getting a little snow in there which was cool and then she opens up you know pull latch turn or no i did backwards pull latch turn open yep. door opens big old force energy field and she just literally holds her hand out like this and this panel opens up and just like muscle memory kicked in, it's like, and she's opening up these three security blocks to deactivate this purple force field, which, by the way, looked really cool. And there's a, you know, uh, just for lack of a better term, because at the time we didn't know what it was called in the movie, what they were going to call the movie, a synthetic body. You didn't know. She comes out. She's holding like well, quite honestly. She's carrying it like a dead body. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. It's and, amazing. But, but it, it it reacts to her when she goes to I guess pull it down. So and, and this is where I give James Cameron and his crew credit for this movie when it came to more of that intricate detail because you could see like the muscle fiber of what would be a human muscular system. In yeah. this, under some, you know, what you would expect, metal plating armor parts. She takes it back, obviously, to Doc Ito and says, I can talk to this. Can you put me in it? Because she wants, to, she at this point has not become a hunter yet, a hunter warrior. No. But she has that desire and she's prone to combat and, and, and she's realizing this because of her past. And she has her, well, we see her, what I call her first tantrum for her, her first, you know, d- daddy daughter fight. Because, that's, that's a good way to Because Doc Ito explains that. this is a URM, you know, Urum berserker. This thing is made for combat. I put you in this, you are essentially he's afraid he's afraid she's going to regain all memory and just destroy everything i think that's what he truly felt but i think she more or less felt it as a way of helping everyone because at this point she still doesn't have much memory i mean she's only had one little episode of backflash oh i take that back too because in the second one she's actually on the ship remembering a training sequence with uh i guess her her sergeant or leader of uh, her her squad or I don't I don't uh, help me out here I know it's I know it's a manga thing but help me out here the individual that she grew up with all of her life that had bested her in every way shape or form that she looked up to okay so her, her we're not using names <laughs> okay in other words her mentor her well, let's go with that it's her rival rival mentor 
uh, greatest friend, worst rival. The doc explains to her, you know, what, at least what he's learned about the war of the, the fall. And we get more detail about it, you know. You know, it's apparently, you know, we find out Alita was designed and built for combat. She was a warrior. She was a berserker. Yeah. And to be an a, Erm a, Berserker. A, a, Erm a United Republic of Mars Berserker, whose job was to take down Zalem. She goes, signs up to be a hunter, gets her little, you know, hunter warrior passport, and she goes to a bar called Kansas. I don't think we're in Kansas anymore, Toto. <laughs> and who does she run into at Kansas is what I find funny. Right outside the front door. Little doggy that she you know, was nice to. She's like, oh, I remember you. How about you come on in? My heart dropped during yeah. that scene. Yeah, by the all way. of our, all of our, I think, drops like. Anyone that we, knew... because we watched the OVA before we went to the movie, and oh no, Any, oh no. <laughs> anyone that knew what was going to happen yeah. there, your heart dropped. Yeah, if you haven't seen the movie, I'm sorry, and you're watching this because of the spoilers. Yeah, it's going to hurt. Luckily, they don't show anything, but you hear it, and it's just the, the sound of it. It's uh, There's a visceral, <gasps> wet separation yeah. sound of... Flesh and... Bone. <laughs> yeah, and it's just real gnarly. Yeah, and the other thing is, um, while she's in, before that even happens, she's in the bar, and, you know, she's... She's looking around, and Hugo's giving her the rundown. Oh, this is where all the roller, the motorballers come, and all the the hunter killers. And you can look at some of these characters, and you can tell, yeah, they are hunter killers. There's, um, I um, love how you're not even calling them hunter warriors. Oh, hunter warriors, them hunter, hunter killers. killers. God, I've been watching too much Demolition Man. Well, in this movie, <laughs> in all honesty, they were, yeah, murderers. Yeah, essentially, I mean, most of them didn't even look like what I would consider. Maybe the one guy that was the one guy in there that actually looked like a bounty hunter. And he was actually more of a mix of Bounty Hunter meets Crocodile and me, Dundee meets, you know. He was uh, Montana Man. Yeah, Let's Montana be honest. Man, yeah. He was Montana he, Man. <laughs> I love his beard, man. I was like, I can't grow a beard to save my life. And this mountain weirdo over here has got a full face. Oh, yeah. yeah. I can't help F it. F you. <laughs> oh, dude. This is easy so, for me. Uh, we this see, is a Tuesday. So we go. <laughs> fuck. Jeez. So we go in. She goes in the bar. And she's like, so, who's all here? And then we see uh, for... Like the second time we see Zapan, and that... and real quick with Zapan, I have to talk about it because we didn't get to talk about it. He like in in the anime, Zapan looks kind of like as as he Sock looks interesting. <laughs> he looks interesting. It's yeah. like I wanted to get to know him, but in the movie, and this was the best shot that we could find. Mind you, he's played by the same guy who plays. Uh, Where's Francis? <laughs> Oh, I'll spell he it play, out for you. He play is the same guy who plays Ajax in Deadpool, and and he's just <laughs> a beautiful. Awesome. He he plays such beautiful assholes. Yeah, I can't, he does. I can't get around that. But he has this beautiful ornate back piece. Yeah, the detailing they did on this it almost looked like a mix between like the Mayan calendar mixes mixed with the uh, trigrams, mm -hmm. and it's so. Damn detailed. I wish we we hit mind you. We spent an hour looking for it and we could not find it on the internet. Yeah. But this is the best we got. I mean, you can kind of see it, but if you go and see the movie and or if you have seen the movie and you paid attention, you cannot lie to me and tell me that's not some damn good metal work. It's it's pretty amazing and uh it, it's just oh, and he, <sighs> and his sword, the Damascus blade. And I don't mean that as in a, the technical term of Damascus where it is metal folded on top of metal on top of folded on metal on top of on folded on metal and it continues like that. It's it's an But we all know real Damascus from actual Damascus Greece had little plastic rods inside on a microscopic level which made the metal more malleable, more spring like, and a lot stronger. It's not real Damascus. And anything that we produce today <laughs> Unless it's traditional. <laughs> ah, but even then, we still don't yeah, know the recipe yeah. and how the Greeks did it. <laughs> that is not a Damascus blade, but it, it's a very yeah, pretty it's, pattern it's called, blade. That's the, pretty much what the pattern is called nowadays, is Damascus. Yeah, Damascus so, uh, the Damascus blade, which it happens to be an Urm uh, weapon. Yeah. It's, it's a, it is a United Republic of Mars weapon uh, meant for cutting. And according to... 
Zappen, he says that the blade is so sharp it cuts armor like butter. Now, I will now, say Now, my this. question is, is that cold butter or is that hard butter or hot butter? I would assume it was a hot knife through butter. I I, that's s- what I want to assume, but, I mean, we, we see that. We, that blade comes into play later on. I will say this because I'm a little sad. If you all read the manga, you, you know what I'm going to say, where that blade comes from. Um, he told me already. I don't have to. He's like, yeah, he's gonna this we're gonna we're gonna spoil it. But I kind of wish. And, and, and actually, no. I'm cool with the change, but at the same time, I wish that they kept more true to the manga on that. Comment down below. How do you feel about the that change? Because. That's like one of the changes. The, he was literally like biting his nails in the movie, by the way. I, I was, He's I like, was, Arr. I think you could see the anger on my <laughs> face. I don't know if it was, like, it was a little dark in there and I was kind of hooked on a movie. Thank you very much. <laughs> but I did see an arm go up and I went and saw it come back down. Yeah, it was like, <clears throat> but Zapan gives him the, gives him, gives, uh, gives Alita the rundown of who's who in Kansas bar even though the bartender has a has a quite the affinity for his uh his furniture. Oh my god! And I will not. Not lie. the there furniture was, asshole. Yeah, got one eye. And he was like he's like a white Nick Fury. Yes. <laughs> he's like not the furniture. <laughs> oh my god! It was so good. Yeah, and so he gives the rundown. Oh, this is Screwhead. This is uh, some other dude and some Asian dude and some other dude. And the dog master. And then we finally feet meet Mo- Mr. Montana Man, who's a dog master. He's got four cybernetic dogs. And little, uh, we never got a name for the dog, did we? Oh, I'm, we're gonna call her Golly. Then we're gonna call that dog uh, Splatter Fodder. Oh no, that's nasty. Uh, yeah, SF. We're calling it SF then. Special Splatter Force. Fodder. Special Force. Splatter Fodder. Shut up. <laughs> Cute little puppy. Go to Montana Man. Get hey, because Mr. Montana Man, even though he's got four cybernetic dogs, you know he's sitting there petting that yeah, little Splatter just, Fodder. Just, Obviously, the dog lover of the group. You got to find the one animal guy in the entire movie. And he even said he has a line where he says he didn't love animals. Yeah, he and that we'll, we'll get to that line too. Uh, and uh, so you know, he's like, hmm. and he's the one like the quiet one in the entire bar at the moment. His dogs are just like perking their ears, like ooh, because one of them like, you could obviously tell was like part wolfhound, another one was like part Doberman, another one was like German Shepherd, like big, you know, like. Dogs I would want to use in a fight, quite honestly, if I was going to, you know, hunt down bad guys. Hurting and hunting dogs yeah, is, is you know, what they are. The only thing he was missing was a bloodhound, pretty much. Uh, he had a, he had a, it looked like he had a wolfhound. Yeah, the, the big one pack. was a wolfhound. Yeah, yeah definitely. so I, I think he's got the, he's yeah, got the tracking, the tracking yeah. covered. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Alita makes this fine little speech of, hey, because they, they, I, I have to say yeah. this. This is the corniest goddamn <laughs> thing I've ever heard. Man. And just the words coming out of her mouth, I was like, You're going, oh God. No. You've just ruined the whole tone of the movie for me. <laughs> and then Zapan, yeah, oh, like, literally laughs. And he's like, You are a dumbass. And <laughs> you just are the way, adorably stupid. <laughs> and the way that he denounces it, I was like, The movie has a conscience. Thank <laughs> you, the God. Mo- the movie is sentient. <laughs> it's self aware of itself. It's making fun of the speech. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yes. And, and, and she insults them so wonderfully, too, though, at the same time during her speech. And it flips super hard because she gives this, you know, come, my brothers. And like, literally. She's like a, she's like a, like a teeter tottering, you know coin on a side like she's leaning to the good side and all of a sudden she goes turns around and insults everybody and just it lands there uh, yep and yeah. it stays and, and then that's when we see some seriously badass uh martial arts work too because she grabs the pan and just you know has one arm here and yanks him <laughs> takes his little like goatee soul patch metal piece and rams his head through the wood and i can hear you can you can hear the bartender in the back going not the furniture <laughs> <laughs> throws him across the room into another one and then throws his blade into a wall and it sinks like that far from the hilt. <laughs> Straight up tells him, like, oh, you yeah. deserve to have that sword. Yeah. Like, he- and then she goes to walk out after she's insulted all these people. Mind you, Mr. Uh, Mr. Montana Man with his dogs is still sitting there petting, petting Munchkin. That's what, you know, we're just going to call it Munchkin. Little Munchkin. Splatter fodder. Shut up. It's Munchkin. We're going to call it Munchkin. SF Splatter. 
Sorry, an- <laughs> animal lover and Mr. Oh. Anti over here. Oh, no, I love animals. What ha- what happens to that dog is not funny. It is sad. Actually, yeah. the best way to compare that would be PETA and Steve Irwin from the recent... <laughs> like, you know, Alita's like, you killed my dog. Yeah. So, uh, Garishka comes knocking at the front door after, you know, Doc Ito's coming and tried to defuse the situation. Mind you, typical bar, bar brawl. Everybody's getting in on but it. But the way he diffuses the situation is perfect. No so more daddy. free repairs. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so awesome. Like, and it's like instantaneous. Instantaneous. Everybody's like, Oh man! Oh nope, shit! Nope. Hey, how you doing, buddy? I'm, I'm I'm doing fine. How about you? We weren't fighting Doc, no, not us. And then Alita does this thing where she's like, "I can't look at you it's right like, now. It. I know I done goofed. Oh, you don't God. have to tell me I done goofed. I, I, I goofed. I, I, I'm sorry, Daddy. I done I done messed up. And then you get this <laughs> this thing, and it's it's gnarly because you get Garishka part and, two part two, and he is just. The manliest man to ever man the manly man. He's like an action figure that everybody wants. Oh, dude, I wanted that action figure. Uh, he just looks like RoboCop on steroids. Oh, he, no, he was. Uh, yeah, no, he oh, was. Dude. He was more just bad metal man. Yeah. Oh God, he he just. He I went mean, from, from that, that to, to that. that. And I think he gained like two feet in the process, didn't he? Oh, more than he probably he, I mean, gained four when, when, feet. When we say he bust in the door, the door, the only thing left of said door was splinters. Yeah, he he when, when and maybe even some rubble. When we say that the he came a knocking, he didn't really knock. More like uh, explode the door in <laughs> with C four. So he challenges Alita, and they go down into the underground, which, by the way, Kansas is a very deep basement. (laughs) (laughs) Very deep. I thought I had hoarding problems. (laughs) And Alita is actually not doing terribly, but... And and that's one thing I really liked about this. Um, Alita does break in the manga, and this is... she broke here. She broke broke in this movie, and she broke super hard... And she actually shoves her hand into his damn eyeball. Yeah. And Straight up, just... Let me take these off first before I break them, because I don't need yeah, to go Yeah, don't, don't break like, straight in there. Like, she knife hands him first to get in there, and she snaps her own hand off, probably about mid-arm, mid-forearm. No, it was uh, it was higher than that. It was, it was just below the elbow. Okay, so she, yeah, she, she stole almost full forearm in there. Mm-hmm. I mean, that'd be... Personally, but then again, Garishka has a big head. Yeah. So he's probably got, you know, a hand that's like, way the F back here, you know, stuck in there. Guaranteed and she, that's where we drop. That's where she drops her our, our one F-bomb for yep. the movie. Yep. Uh, and, you know... With as big as his head is, it's not touching brain matter. I guarantee it because his head is... Wait, are you saying he's stupid? No, I'm <laughs> saying that his his actual skull yeah. is so gigantic. Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's there's no... You can't get to the, the brain very quick in there. No. And he, he ends not up... Not like there's much brain in there to begin with. No. I mean. <laughs> he ends up being pushed back and has to run away. He has no choice. Ito ends up hammering him. Yeah. And then... <laughs> and then Hugo ends up firebombing him, so he Molotov cocktails him right in the freaking face. I really don't know if it was a Molotov cocktail or if it was just like an incendiary grenade. No, it was... It was it, it, well, does it look like, a, like an... It like was a, a, it was like a, a high-tech incendiary grenade. It looked like a high-tech Molotov cocktail because it was a clear <laughs> bottle. It was a clear bottle and... It uh, was a clear bottle and he went on fire. Let's just put it that way. Yeah. Let's leave it there. He he went on fire. It was a Molotov. And left screaming. Uh, well... Mind you, the no, entire fight... No, Montana Man's dogs yeah, end up actually yeah. chasing him away. Yeah, Mr. Montana Man. And that, that's where we get our great line from Mr. Montana Man. He was not a dog lover. <laughs> it was so beautiful. Yes, I mean, Mon- Mr. Montana Man, I love you. <laughs> I who, not love. Who played him? I have no idea. It's, he's not credited on IMDb. I don't think he is. So we we get to the eventuality that Ito has to accept everything that's going on, 
and he has to install the Berserk body. Yep. And, and he tells Alita straight up, this is Erm technology. I don't know what I'm doing. If you break, you're broke because I can't fix you. Yeah. And the other thing is, she ex- he explain you know he gives her kind of like uh, a motivational talk saying, yeah, this body was made for war, but that doesn't make it who you are. It's simply a shell, and a shell cannot be good or evil. Yeah, which is very true. Yeah, um, it, it, it it's you are, just that. It, it is what you make of it. And one thing that I will say, one of my favorite lines in the manga. And it reflects this very well. Is the the mind is but a plaything of the body, and I believe it was Garishka that. <music> that actually said that in the manga, and that's Ito's way of kind of saying, "No, you're in control." You get to do the thing that you want to do. He's looking at Montana Man, right? Yeah. So uh, we we now cut to you know Alita has been invited to Motorball. Yeah. And she's she's been invited to. Oh, like I said, let's let's go back to getting installed into the Berserker armor. Oh yeah, because that wasn't. <sighs> Again, to James Cameron's motion capture and his crew for visual effects. We find out that the berserk armor is made of nanite. Nano is na- is, is a nano nanites. The uh, the berserk so, army armor is uh, semi nano technology. Yeah, and it actually adjusts to the perception you have of yourself uh, yeah. and your mind and your subconscious, which actually plays a huge part in the manga later. And I'm glad they kept that because that needed to be a thing. So it actually adjusts itself to what Alita mm-hmm. feels like she is. And it does it kind of and it shows it too and they go they, they don't really start at the feet, they start more like at the thigh and they kind of work their way up and you know, she fills herself out a little bit more and I, I love uh, Nurse he- uh, Getty's uh, response to that. She's like, not as young as you thought she was, huh? <laughs> A little older than you should thought she yeah, was, a little huh, older Doc? Than, yeah, a little older than she thought, you thought she was, huh, Doc? Yeah. And it's an, an amazing scene, and the the CGI work on it is absolutely yeah. phenomenal. That that's the one scene where you can where they really get up close there, and they show like the muscle fibers of this armor, which are mimic the actual muscle fibers of a human being. So now we're. Uh... Now with her armor, her new body installed, there's a lot that she's got going on for her. Test drive! And the test drive ends up being motorball. So when she ends up going to the motorball arena, she finds out that, well, her competition's out to kill her. And yeah, because her competition's either hunter warriors or uh, uh, disgraced motorballers who uh, have bounty on their head. And it's, it's pretty interesting because Ito's the one that finds out because he he's sitting in the he's sitting in the stands, freaking with his you know his opera glasses, going. Wait a minute, I know that guy. He's got a brush on his head. Uh oh. And then there's the realization, like. Oh. By the way, it really is opera glasses. It's they're like cyberpunk opera glasses. <laughs> yeah, they really. Oh man. It's, he's like. Wait a minute, I know them. It's so amazing. I know them. Wait, what? Okay, Bobby Duke. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, it, and, and then this this battle that ensues, and one thing that yeah, I really he, like. He comes running down the stands, gives her, I don't know why he just didn't call her right there. You know, just. just but, hey, honey, they're going to kill you. Well, the first, Which ones? All of them. <laughs> well, the first thing he tries to do is flag her down. Hey, Alita, listen, <laughs> get out, get out, get out. Because, shoves people out of the way. Good popcorn goes down on the ground. And then he gives the phone <sighs> call, disgrace. and she gets the phone call in her head. Get out of that! They're going to kill you! Which, Which ones? ones? All, All of them. them! So they've got this race that they're performing, and it is just in your face, just 
freaking kill zone. And the uh, the uh, the announcer also kills it with this one because he's like, <laughs> "Oh, and what we thought was going to be a boring Tuesday turns out to be awesome." <laughs> no, the line was, and I I almost fell out of my seat laughing. Oh, it looks like it's No Rules Tuesday. Yeah. I was like, what the hell? Yeah. Because they were like, they thought it was going to be a boring night. And they're going, oh, oh, this is all right. Because this is a rookie. It, because this is a first time rookie on the track, there will be no teams. All men for themselves. Free uh, for all. And, and he's sitting there talking about it like it's going to be a snooze fest. And then when he says it's a No Rules Tuesday... I was like, well, damn. So, so in the sense, in another sense, we get our second motorball moments. And I'm sitting here like Marvin the Martian going, ooh, isn't that lovely? And because I, we're seeing Martian technology go into town. <laughs> oh, man. And I really hope, please, for the sequel, because it, it's supposed to be all based on motorball and Joushkin. I know that you're probably going to have like the first third of it motorball and then go to Zalem. But please give us more Motorball. I want it so bad. I would be happy with a TV show of just Motorball. I know. So after she picks up the ball, Alita's off to a running start. And very quickly, she throws that ball into someone's head and everyone she takes just forgets. takes out three of them within like the first few turns. Yeah. And and the ball just gets discarded and it's like, yep, yeah, we're going like, to nope. kill each other. She's like, nope. You know what? Screw the ball. Battle Royale. And then the worst thing happens. Hugo decides he's going to go over to his buddy, Tanji, and tell him, you know what, it's done, I quit, I'm in love yeah. with Alita, I can't do this, I've got to go see her. And in the midst of all of that, Zapan is waiting for him. Yeah. And, and Tanji's in the middle of uh, an operation. We'll call it an operation. It's, it's dismemberment. Yeah, it, it straight up is. And Zapan kills the victim and blames hugo for it straight up right across the neck and then cuts tanji goes, in the half. goes for the jugular yeah and then what was it what was it three four parts of uh, tanji in the anime that he just in the in the anime tanji only gets uh his head chopped off yeah in this in the movie he gets like straight up straight, cut in like half. middle like at the belly button pretty yeah. much yeah and trying to protect hugo who's been now framed for a murder yeah essentially uh, and now he's got you know oh you know we're gonna blame sanji's murder on you too now or Ta tanji sanji God. tanji's murder tanji on you. not sanji i'm sorry ichiro oda sorry <laughs> i don't i love sanji <laughs> so we get this hey, my smoking cook we get this really reminiscent scene of you know zapan holding hugo up to to a wall crushing his thumb into his shoulder yeah. Dig, digging it right uh, in there. Right. Uh, but it, actually, it was, it was, it was, it was yeah, one. it was the right shoulder. This one, yeah. Yeah, the right shoulder. <laughs> I, and, I, I'm not used to cameras still. So, <laughs> actually, they kind of hurt. <laughs> so uh, we, get, we get Hugo running away and getting away from Zapan and then calling Alita frantic. We, yeah, because we get a, we get an awesome parkour. We get an awesome little parkour scene. Yeah. I he, mean, we're talking do, do, like, do. like he's like jumping 20, 12, like 12, 20 feet in the air. Like, Bouncing off things. We're, we'll say I would say it was probably about twelve, 12 feet yeah. in the air because um, he jumps like he jumps off the wall, goes up about six feet, jumps on again, he lands on this little. He jumps on like, an archway, jumps archway, on the yeah. wall, and then continues through the marketplace. Yeah. And he, he does that to get over a kiosk, and it was actually really impressive. Yeah, um, I get I get the stunt man props for that that was that was pretty cool and then he scales cars he ends up jumping on one short car one hiding on car. Hides, hides on the freaking bumper of it and then hide, jumps up off that thing and into a onto a balcony and keeps running yep and then but he, in the entire time you know zapan's just following the blood trail and like hey man you don't realize oh i gotta staunch the bleeding here yep <laughs> so he's all, a kid you know what do you expect yeah he doesn't know he doesn't so know. he all, doesn't know jack Alita actually flies off the track and through one of the billboards and lands... No, no, no. It wasn't through one of the billboards. It was through the video... The, the well, was, Jumbotron. Well, the Jumbotron. And the people followed. Yes. And then we had a three... No, four other individuals, motorballists, actually trying to follow. No, it was four. Because one of them gets killed on the pipe 
trying to get to her. That was three, though. Was it three? Yeah, it was only three. Oh, my God. Yeah, because... That one body of which, count. Yeah, one of which was... Um, the guy was on the pipe, and he just ends up falling to his doom. I guess he like get, couldn't get good traction or whatever. Couldn't get good because she had, you know, she had burst a pipe, and quite honestly, I don't want to know what was in it. it yeah, it, it was green and it looked nasty. It looked. I'm like pretty a sure somebody pipe. got staff. I'm, so, I'm pretty sure somebody got staff. Oh yeah, <laughs> with that. absolutely. And then um, the following two, they she finally stops at this uh, area and it's just kind of like an open area and she's like okay bring it on suckers I'll take you on one girl launches herself and you know she's using a chain to tie down uh, Alita Alita you know straight up reverses it and drags her to it and you know chomps her in half or uses the other bad guy who has the extendable arms of the buzz saws and you know slices the bad chick in half I think it was screwball quite honestly Uh, it was screwball and uh, then turns around, wraps the ba- guy with the buzzsaw, and you know, screw ties head. him up, and or screw head, yeah, and screw then ties head. ties her him up, and then throws him into a grinder. Yeah, uh, and if you're thinking of the Judas, uh, if you're thinking of the Judas Priest song "Grinder," yeah, that's literally looking for me. That's like what went through my head. Grinder <laughs> yeah. wants you to eat. But then again, I, you don't need to get yeah. into my twisted metal dreams. Um, <laughs> Sounds awesome. <laughs> so we 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 get this moment of solace where it looks like Hugo actually shook Sapan. And he's going into the entrance of the church. And surprise, asshole's right around the corner. Yeah. Like, well, you know. I just, Almost made it. I just followed the breadcrumbs, bro. And it was one of those, like, son Ajax of a, a bitch. Ajax a dick moment. And, and, and <laughs> Exactly what it was. It was an Ajax a dick moment. It it, it was beautiful. So he's ready to like kill him, and Alita steps in. Nope. And then it's it's stated right there. You can't interfere with my kill. It's hunter warrior code. If you interfere with with my kill, it's done deal. It's breaking the law. You kill him. And yeah. I'll give you the kill. I'll give you the bounty, but you got to do it. She does say it, he's mine. So yeah. I mean, so she she walks him into the church, and he's already been stabbed through. He's yeah, been he's been through ran with, through with the Damascus blade, and he kind of honestly got it like butter. Yeah, flesh and Damascus blade butter. And, and now, he, he's dying out. He's bleeding out. Because I mean, dying. She, he she, he got it like right through the heart, dude. It was, <sighs> That was brutality. Well, it was. I, I think it was like right in the aorta yeah. because it was just below the heart. It wasn't quite center mass. It was in the trunk. Yeah. And if I had and to say, she's bawling her eyes out. He's like, I don't want to die. It's getting cold. It's getting dark. And then in a in a really interesting twist and what I think is character uh, development, honestly. And he confesses. Is uh, well, not even that. Like, yeah, he confesses, like, hey, listen, I did all these things. I didn't actually do these things. Um, I'm being framed. I did do some bad things, but not with yeah, I, terrible I, intention. Yeah, and, I got out for you. And then, Shir- st- and then Shirin comes out from the corner, and once they're in the church alone and says... She has a, re- a, a redeeming moment after working with uh, Vector for so long now. With For too long. Yeah. Vector Vector calls her and says, "Hey, listen, did you find them?" And she, she lies. She straight up, yeah, straight up lies. Like, no, no, they're gone. So what ends up happening since he's dying and he's run through, they decapitate him to make it look like he's dead, and hooks him up to, to her life support. And because of that, you know, she's walking out. She's got the head. And, yeah. and the body now is At this point, discarded. now we've got two more uh, hunter warriors, or I think either factory uh, personnel. We've got... With like, yep. three centurions. Trions. Yeah. And they're like, stop. You have interfered with uh, factory law and hunter, kill- and hunter warrior code. Well, what ends and, up, she, and then she's like, no, I didn't. Look, got the head. It, what ends up happening is the pan calls her out on yeah. her bullshit and says, hey, listen... You didn't kill him. Um, what I need from you now is is to show head. me proof. And then she shows that the there's a head underneath her jacket. 
and we've got three Centurions, and it looks like maybe two other Hunter Warriors. Yeah. We're not 100% sure. They're either Hunter Warriors or they're either like collectors for bounties or something like that. I don't know. Something. Like, and, I don't know, Door like DoorDash for bounty hunters? <laughs> and and Zaban can see he that... Sees she, the, he sees the tubes for the vitals that being she, pumped into him. Yeah, that she's all hooked up, and... He goes to move in on her kill. Yeah, well, which was a great play on Alita's part for the double cross. Because the Centurions don't the, see They it. don't see the tubes. All they saw was, oh, she's got the head. She's holding the head. That bounty is hers. So she ends up taking his Damascus blade and cutting his beautiful face off. He, and he's going, my face! My face! It's so cool! Like, yeah, face is cut off, nose is gone, and he's like, he's missing like... You know, majority of the front of his teeth and his half of his tongue, and he's like sitting there screaming, "Baby, baby!" And mind you, that's kind of exactly what he sounded like. Yeah. Well, yeah, because he was missing most of his teeth and my half face! of his tongue. My face! So we get this, and the other guys are like, Mm-mm. "Yeah, I'm touching that." Nope. Mm-mm. So then we get this really awesome uh, reverse Pinocchio moment. Yep. Where, you know, we made the real boy uh, a Hugo, not real boy. Yeah, yeah, Hugo goes, I'm a cyborg. And it's another amalgamation of terror. But instead of... Instead of Ido and and Alita splitting tasks and, and one going for Vector and the other one going for uh, Hugo, who hasn't left yet... What ends up happening is Alita goes and she wants to exact revenge oh, all yeah. on her own. So she. So this is where we change. We where it gets switched up from the OVA to uh, the movie is when she goes to exact. Is when she goes to exact her revenge because originally it was, uh, as we said, you know Doc Ito going to Vector, not her. So this time it's actually her going to Vector to get her. You know. Right. And in, in in the process, you know, she's got her blade. She chops her way through the, the as we've shown before, if you want to work your mouse magic, man, um, of the, and, uh, of the and Centurions. Those, yes, and this, this scene is right the here. actual scene. Yeah, this is, a, this is a, a, a snippet from the actual scene. And she fights off all these Centurions. And because the, the, the Damascus blade is uh, Mars technology, and where obviously she is too, it works with her. She's end up like able to power it up and give it some sort of like plasma energy, and she cuts through these guys like toys, like hot metal on plastic. It is really and it's, it's a, it is an epic scene because she's deflecting bullets like a lightsaber. <laughs> she's taking down one centurion after the next. The scene is cathartic yeah. because you want to see her succeed. And you want to see her do real damage. And she ends up doing real, real damage. damage. She eventually takes one, you know, she goes to the 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 counter where they drop off the bounty heads. And she takes one of the Centurion Gatling guns and just... Which I'm sad. Goes right through it. I'm sad because you all know that that character becomes very important later. And it killed me. When I saw it fall and break. It, but that robot does become a character eventually. So now we've got this this really interesting meeting with uh, with Alita and Vector. And it goes about as well as you'd think. It goes over like a fart in a spacesuit. We... <laughs> <laughs> Which is funny because I have to fart right now. <laughs> so we get... Uh, Garishka coming through like hey guess what I'm still alive I'm back wait and, wait I can, actually, I can do a better one yeah. I'm back and after, if you get that you watch South Park and after giving her just literally a grazing blow to her hip and her body regenerates with the nanotechnology yeah. she, like she's like story. you know what let's do it buddy wash I'll... my hands of you cut you in half yeah straight up Shing. It's like an unceremonious it, it, the, growing. I to... love, I love the splitting of him because it was it, it, again. It plays attention to that detail we were talking, we've been talking about, mm -hmm. and you can see like the sinew and the the organ organic parts are what's left organically, and the internals of all the cyborg is just boop, like spaghetti and like 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 warm cheese. There, That's the best yeah. way I can describe it. Is like. The, 
In between his gray matter, there is some really interesting webby goo yeah. that separates with him, and it pulls like mozzarella cheese. Yeah. That's what Neil is talking about. Thank you. And it's really, really gnarly. Because but it's so awesome. It, again, it's cathartic <laughs> because he gets his comeuppance. And, and we, you're going, yes, we need him, finally! We need him to get his comeuppance. And in all honesty... This isn't too different from the anime or the manga because you do get a gladiator bot that does try to protect Vector. It's just this one is still yeah. Garishka and Garishka. And before, before even Alita gets up there, we see uh, you know Chirin, who's had her redeeming moment, and you know. Oh yeah. Yeah, that that was hard because it's like. She goes to walk away, and it like cuts scene, and it's like, oh, you know, there's a cy- you know, there's a cyborg back there. You, you see a shadow, and you hear it, and it's like, oh, no, 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 no. So no. Vector att- essentially tries to entice her, mm-hmm. like, hey, listen, I'll you lied. Yeah, I'll send you this all right now. You lied to me about them. I get it. I understand. How can we make this right? And she tells him straight up, go f yourself. Yeah. And. He says, no, that's that's not okay. Tell you what, what, what about I send you to Zalem? And she tells him that I've got everything right here that yeah. I wanted. She's I had that, 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 char- that character redeeming moment. And it's complete. Unlike yeah. any other medium, it is complete because she like, She doesn't even second think about it. She doesn't yeah. even you know give it a second thought about you know rejoining Zalem. And she's like, no, you know what, F it, I'm done. And Not it, worth the trouble. And it's you beautiful. Know, Ito was right. You know, she's coming to that realization, yeah, my ex-husband was right. Yep. And then Alita comes in, wreaks all sorts of habit, but then we see Alita and uh, Vectors Vector. talk through, and she's like, oh, yeah, you want to see uh, Chiron? She's right here. And straight up RoboCop moment. Opens up, bunch of, like, hands and the brain and the eyeballs all in, like, high-tech pickle jars. Yep. And, uh, and I'm like, <gasps> Robocop. And all of the parts, by and the way. And closes it back up. All the parts, by the way, are still moving and the eyes are blinking. Yeah, that was the creepiest part. Which was part. weird. <laughs> but, and I have to say this. You got one thing wrong on that scene. And that's all I'm going to say. Okay. That's you got one thing wrong on that scene. And if all of you have been there when he's covered his ears, you already know what it is. But here's text right here. To tell you why I'm mad at that scene. Mm-hmm. Um, so Mind I, you, I can't read that. I have no idea. I'm just, you know, what's down here? So after, Is there something on my shirt? <laughs> so after Alita gets her come up, or after everyone gets their come up, including Vector, and in, she runs Vector through with the Damascus blade, Mr. Destiny Nova decides to, like, I'm going to use my puppet one more time while he's dying. Yep, and Destiny Nova essentially tells her. You know, I'm watching, I'm waiting, I'm up in Zalem waiting for you. I'm waiting, I'm watching you. Come come get me, and it's it's really weird. And, and she just pretty much goes, you, I'm coming, just yeah. you wait. Yeah, so it, it's, it's, it's like mother of God. So now she gets uh, the call, Hugo's trying to get to Zalem. And he's climbing up. And he's climbing up the tube. And the reason for it is he's trying to escape. He he he, he doesn't he, get nearly as, ze- as overzealous about escaping. No, it, it's it's not about going to Zalem. It's about freedom. freedom yeah. It, he's he's now afraid that the factories are just gonna come for his. For him. Yeah, he's got a bounty on his head. You know, they'll realize he's still alive. <laughs> You know, and, and they'll come after Alita, and you know she's she's at this point of I don't care. I will destroy everyone. I'll burn the mother down. Yeah, that's her mentality, and he he's kind of at this like turning point where he he wants to trust her, he wants to believe her, but he doesn't want to damn her, and everything he's doing is doing from, just that from from the motorball on. The road to hell is paved in good intentions, and we see that shine through Mm -hmm. on his character. And as this final moment of of solace, you know, he's finally come to grips to it. He's going to come back to her. 
They're going to live together. Their love is going to see them yeah. through. She, mind you, she still has to talk him down, but it's it's you know it's 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 much it's a much more heartfelt than it was in the OVA. Yes, you actually much like more. you're like, oh man. Well, feeling <laughs> you get to see the actual physical Destiny Nova, yeah. and he he drops a a uh, security ring down. Oh. Which she's already had. Yeah, she's a had memory a backlash because it's like, oh, this is where I nearly lost my rival, my bad rival, good friend. Yeah. Wait, did I get that right? Uh, best of friends, worst of okay, rivals. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so, so the Naruto and Sasuke. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. Yeah. And so uh, the female version of Naruto and Sasuke. Um, so yeah, the, the security ring jumps down. They both try to jump it. He doesn't jump high enough. He doesn't jump high enough. So on the first ring, he gets it. He doesn't even send down a second ring nope. in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the movie. So he's already, you know, just, you know, Swiss cheese. Yeah. He's got majority. And, you know, Alita takes her to mask display, which now somehow, because of the way it's, you know, it's designed with, you know, Martian technology, it just fits right on her, on her forearm, which quite honestly is like, very reminiscent of um, uh, Spiegel Gundam from mm -hmm. from uh, G Gundam. Mm -hmm. So she, you know, hooks the blade on, and she, you know, she's she's again holding on by her blade, and she's got her boyfriend now, who is falling apart. It seems again, again, and he falls into the clouds he, with he the makes, same parting words. He makes his final confession: "I love you." Uh, you know, don't don't. Don't do anything stupid. Pretty much mm -hmm. after after me, and, and keep on you know being you. And don't don't do what I did. You know that he got it. Mind you, and she's she's trying for dear life to pull his ass up, and he's just. <laughs> and then I, I liked how they because the difference between this and the anime was, uh, he you know they just he just fell, and there was all you saw was the city. Whereas with the movie, he falls, and it's just a cloud, and the cloud kind of just like consumes him. It envelops his, his silhouette, yeah. and we don't get to see the actual impact, which, in all honesty, seeing him fall into the cloud, that was sad. Yeah. That actually That was, was more like, sad than uh, watching him just fall. Yeah. Yeah. It, because you know... And you, Alita's just, she just crying. It, it leaves it to the imagination, yeah. and you know, and she... And some of us have very dark imaginations. She has this outburst of rage, and... She she just lost everything yeah. in life, and quite honestly, at that point, I was expecting her to continue running up the the tube to up to uh, Destiny uh, Nova Nova, and and just you know re raise all sorts of hell up there on on Zalem. But no, she goes back down and goes and does it the right way. You know, goes up to Zalem the right way with uh, Motorball becoming Grand Champion. Well, it 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 cuts to it has a really interesting segueing transition scene where the night and day cycle is sped up That's, real yeah, real quite fast. Quite a few of them too. And we we hear by the announcer of Motorball that it's been a couple of months, but Alita has rose through the ranks, which is essential because that yeah. happens in the manga. She is one of the best motorball champions because of her time as a hunter yeah, warrior. And, and you can tell from like her first time out that was on excuse me, on the on the motorball uh rink or track track. That, that is a track. She's she's gotten some money behind this. She's gotten some sponsorship. She's gotten she's got better armor for it. She's she's uh, got better wheels. You, you see like, you know, brass and gold and silver pistons all over and she, she and then she points and with she points the blade with the blade and she points at Zalem and directly I don't know if she can see him or not but it's at Destiny, Destiny Nova. Nova and he takes off these crazy spectacles of some type like binocular spectacles and shows him you know his saw him in the deep blue eyes and it turns out it's you know it was edward norton it was edward norton edward norton playing destiny song who had like what 10 lines in the whole movie that weren't th or no two lines in the whole movie that weren't through a different character no she, he never spoke okay he never spoke and uh and 
And in all in all, that was the end. And then we had the the credits roll with a nice musical number. Yeah, very nice. And very uh, short. Very short. Very short credits. Very short credits uh, because we stayed until the end because we're we that were, way. We, 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 we were kind of hoping for a Marvel moment and, and uh, hoping maybe some some after credit scenes. And we didn't get that. This is why Tara said, don't be long-winded in the review. This is the longest review I'm ever having to cut. <laughs> yeah, you're going to be doing a lot of cutting. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a tomorrow thing. Yeah. So this will probably yeah, come it's out. Yeah, now, so yeah. It's, and I've got an hour drive home. <laughs> this is going to be what, one of those. I'm going to be stopping at the closest QT and getting oh, like yeah. the hardest espresso ever. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've been James with Brain Candy Productions. I'm Neil with Das Geeking Out. Please follow Neil on his channel. And we will see you all in the next exciting video or episode of whatever Brain Candy has going on <laughs> next time.